All right, everyone, and welcome to our latest episode of Regiment on the Run. I have once again lost track. Uh, I think this is like 14 or 15. Sure. We'll, we'll just say it's that. Anyway, uh, point 15. is... 15. 15, okay. Then we are here with Regiment on the Run, and we have a very special episode. And by very special episode, I mean that about 30 minutes after our previous episode, things are already happening. So, uh, Terry, Zan, and Ert, uh, I'm going to switch you over to the campsite, because right before you're about to plan uh, where you're going next, uh, Kethlin uh, slaps open the, t uh, the tent flap, and you hear Slap. shouting and, uh, and orders uh, being given outside, and Kethlin says, uh, we have a problem. Oh, dear. Did you just slap my tent? Yes. Yes, I did. And I will do it again. How, how uh, assertive of you. Or er, just, er, like, define problem. The problem is that we have Wasty, and Wasty has eaten an entire Berserker along with a, all of the Berserker's magic items. Well, yeah, that's why I told you to pull them out, duh. We, wait, we fed the magic items? Oh, come on, we couldn't get the magic items out? No. Oh. I mean, I told them to pull them out. Apparently, uh, they didn't get them in time, and Wasty started tugging back. Well, yeah. She rubs her face and says, they currently have Wasty contained, but none of the things that the army is using to actually contain Wasty are actually hurting Wasty. Or, or just start. as long as it didn't get any fire resist, we'll be fine. Is this a bad time to mention the, uh, that the Berserker apparently had an entire bag full of fire resistance potions? Oh, I thought it was a ring. Well, you would have gotten it anyway if it was a ring. Point is that all of the firebolts aren't doing anything, and it seems to be immune to arrows, and they're only barely keeping it contained, and you're sitting around talking about semantics when we could be helping! Urch just looking at his little baby Tina over here. Dan is trying really hard not to have the linguistics person controlling him phase through reality and into the D&D &D game and continue talking semantics. <laughs> <laughs> Terry is going to look to the other two. And just tell them, let's just get out there and deal with this. Because if we don't, it'll probably end up eating half of our army. Oh, yeah. Actually, more than that. After they get to that size, they can start subdividing and it carries the magical properties over. The Empire was nearly depopulated on three occasions by this. Then let's get this handled. Kathleen is just going to grab Terry by the shoulder and drag him out. <laughs> And Zara is just going to grab Zan by the shoulder and drag him out. Zan cocks his magic fists like uh, like from uh, Mission Impossible. He just gets ready. And so uh, you go and witness that uh, Wasty has indeed grown, grown a hell of a lot. Um, the soldiers are only barely keeping Wasty contained by withdrawing the earth whenever uh, Wasty tries to climb up. And specifically, Snowblind is actually going around uh, saying where Wasty is going to make his latest push. Uh, things seem to be under control for the moment, but people are panicking, and uh, it looks like very soon now things are going to get slipped out of control. If you had something that you'd like to do, this is the time. Be clever, or be willing to fight. Ertz is looking at this and goes, okay, now the easiest way to deal with something like this is to catapult it into someone else's area and let them deal with it. But we can't do that, because Tina here needs some juice. Yeah, so we're going to kill the thing. Besides that, it would also be absolutely horrible for public relations. Eh. I don't know, we can aim for those kobolds. There's the kobolds, there's the undead. Those, we all got the go-ahead from the people who make sure that we are still in good public relations. Yeah, but we could aim at them. Yeah, aiming at the people that we already know are people that we can, you know, be mean to. But anyway, we can't do that because Tina is hungry, points at Terry. Go get me the turtle or the troll, whichever one you like least. <laughs> the troll is not for sale. It, no, we're not doing that. Oh, boy. What, you want me to shove it in my brain or something? Are you shoving a crystal? Tina needs a host. I thought you were putting that on the turtle already. Didn't we decide that at the end of the last session? I thought we did. 
Yes, yes, we did. It was it was Terry said that the turtle needed a holder because Terry was not gonna let the turtle have direct contact with it. You lose nearly three percent efficiency doing it that way. I don't. Terry doesn't care. Three <laughs> percent. I don't care. And Terry doesn't care. Zan also doesn't care about the three percent. Just er, put er, it on er, a put it on a freaking fine. holder on the turtle. Fine. Where's my turtle sprite? Uh, one moment. I am getting it. <laughs> Where Ert says in character, "Where's my turtle sprite?" And a can oh. of turtle sprite appears out of thin air. Mmm, refreshing. <laughs> so here is a turtle sprite. Is it lemon lime flavored? No, oh, it's pond scum flavored. So, uh, you have the turtle. It is on call. Uh, and Snowblind uh, tilts his head towards you and says, I really hope that you have a plan. Wasty seems to be getting smarter by the second. Uh-oh. It's immune, to, it's immune to fire. It's immune to physical attacks. Zan's going to shoot it with a bow. Um, he, his bow counts as a magic attack. He just wants to see what happens when he shoots it. Third advises okay. you to fly in the air before you do that. Yeah, He'd rather I'll... not be standing near you. Uh, yeah, I will fly in the air when I do that. Okay. Terry is sitting there going, it didn't eat any brains. Toad ate all of that. Um, uh, Snowblind actually says, I actually heard about this in a class once. Uh, a slime's intelligence it directly correlates with its size. So it doesn't actually need to eat anything complex in order to gain higher intelligence functions. Ah. Meanwhile, Toad just to the side saying, Dater! Dater! <laughs> Aw, poor Toad. <laughs> Snowblind, you have a very developed vocabulary for a 10-year-old. How old is Snowblind? I don't know. <laughs> Snowblind is like 15. Snowblind is, yeah, I was going to say. I just would love the idea of, without actually knowing where Zan is, manages to still somehow make eye contact and say, I'm 15. <laughs> 15, 10, whatever. Yeah, same <laughs> difference. I'm an Aarakocra. We live about that long. You mean 15 or 10 years? Uh, Eric will live about 20 years, I think. Oh, well, no. That's like the, the stupid D&D rules. Anyway. I was say, that's a D&D &D rule. I believe Numbers has said the Vigus rule, and pretty much any humanoid lives at least a human amount of lifespan. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the, the wise thing to do. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, shooting it with a bow. Yes, go ahead and roll the attack roll, please. Uh, button. Where, hey, cursor, come back. There we go. I have cursor. My cursor was running away from me. Uh, okay, that cursor. They changed the, the UI. There we go. 19 to hit for 10 damage. Magic attack. Does that okay. matter? Um, that does, in fact, matter. However, a 19 is a miss. Um, so I missed the giant slime, or like it bounced off without penetrating? Uh, it seems to have bounced off a hard, crusty layer on the outside. Interesting. And, and Wasty burbles a little bit and says, Ooh. And Zan! Yes. Uh, what is your AC again? I'm flying up in the air! My AC is uh, 20, currently. Okay, uh, the arrow is returned, along with a small glob of slime. Uh, it, you managed to get out of the way, but uh, it appears that uh, there's a reason that the soldiers aren't using arrows right now. Even if we, I just wanted to test with the magic arrow, so the magic arrow is just as bad, huh? It seems. Okay. Um, anyone against me going in and slicing it with a sword and seeing what happens with that? I mean, mm. in previous Empire engagements, that just resulted in the same amount of slime just split apart. I could punch it with my magic fist. Or we could levitate the turtle up above it and then drop it. That would kill the turtle. The turtle objects to this on principle. Zan objects to this on wasting a strategic resource. Okay, we can levitate a giant rock. Uh, rock. Does it, can't Slimy eat rock and get bigger from eating rock? Um, Kethlin actually comes in and says, Slimes don't eat stone. That's why it's not just tunneling through the ground. If slimes could eat stone, they just eat the world. Yeah, I thought that's what they did. They're like no, earthworm, slimy. They only eat okay. organic matter, plant life, and animal life. Rocks are wait. <laughs> Rocks are silicone. Zan Zan is just sitting there like. Oh. Anyway, I mean, can I punch it with my magic fists or no? One second. 
Okay. Zen wait. Mm. Uh, are you sure we just don't want to just keep digging this hole downwards? Uh, it is pointed out by the soldiers that they do have to, like, recharge their runes occasionally. And also, Wasty seems to be learning and adapting. Um, I'm going to have Terry contact one of his Vigan hooks. Oh, okay. Because I still have Jochi. Oh, God. What are you going to do to poor Jochi? Which one was Jochi? Uh, he's just gonna he's just gonna send a quick letter, you know, just how does someone in the mainlands handle he looks at the size of Wasty and say, mm, about a four ton minimum slime? Joshi, somehow, uh, and Joshi, if you guys uh, do not remember, he is the uh, rogue from session one that Terry got a hook on uh, uh, after yes. you figured out that they were responsible yes. for killing your superiors. Uh -huh. And is also the one that Terry mildly harassed with politeness at the tavern. Yes, <laughs> I definitely was very polite as Zan. Yep. <laughs> you are always a picture of proper form. Indeed. So, uh, contacting Jochi, Jochi somehow, incredibly alarmingly, finds himself in a library uh, full of, you know, different reference books for how to handle uh, various patrol laws. And he's just very confused as, about, uh, as to why he's there and also talking to Terry at the same time. Uh, he, he might think Terry is terrifying. <laughs> So, uh, no, 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 Joshi... no he, he's robbing the place. It, it's the biggest heist of his life. He's robbing the patrol archives. At least at least Harry's not asking anything, you know, much of Joji. Just, you know, he just wants to know how very, very large, uh, gargantuan, if you will, slimes are handled on the mainlands. Okay, uh, Joji uh, then sends back... Uh, a plea of why the hell did you arrange this? And then proceeds to inform you that uh, the majority of times, negotiation is tried as a strategy first. However, when that falls through, there are several other techniques uh, ranging from, you know, starving it of all food sources to uh, making sure that nobody is harmed by it and this, uh, but it can still live. And then there are the, you know, violent handling procedures. Uh, mostly, what they do is they kill it with fire. Great. What do you do when it's fire resistant? Um, Joshi... Terry will, Terry will reply, what if it's fire resistant? <laughs> yes, just pass along uh, all of Zach's <laughs> questions. Anyway, so uh, Joshi says, if it's fire resistant, then you need to find some sort of drying agent, salt, something like that. Uh, that will cripple mm. it. But the thing is that it's not going to cooperate with anyone that's trying to, you know, put salt on it. So it's a slug. I got it. Okay. It needs water to survive, and that's part of the reason why it eats the things that it eats. Uh, Zan asks if we have, uh, we should have bags of salt for, for preserving rations because Zan has been, Zan and Terry have been slowly changing the soldiers over from being absolute psychopaths eating nothing but turkey legs to actually eating real food. So Zan asks where the salt is. <laughs> All right. Uh, and with that, uh, I believe it is Catechus Temple is going to come to the rescue. And uh, let's see, he is right here. Catechus Temple pulls out a big old bag of salt. And he's there just he like... Goes. Should we actually try negotiations first, though? We kind of need the energy for, uh, for Tina, don't we? I mean, wouldn't it, it might be willing to part with a little bit of itself in order to charge Tina? We need, like, at least half of it, though, don't we? You hear from the pit, Father. <laughs> is that me, or is that Ert? I think that's Ert. <laughs> uh, Ert, Ert, Ert's got something. What do you got, Ert? All right, real quick, the catechist was going to say something. Oh. No, he just has an entire bag of salt. Okay, so we have a bag of salt. Er, er, just, er just walks up to Catechus and is like, that's nice, buddy. Okay, everyone, Alchemist Jug's out. Does Alchemy Jug, do Alchemy Jugs produce salt? 
Water, comma, salt, 12 gallons. So salt water. Salt that water. Like that's that going to w- defeat the purpose. No, it wouldn't. That actually works really well. That actually, it's like scientifically, that works super duper well because it's going to cause osmosis from inside the slime to outside the slime, which will shrink the slime. That's actually true, and I hate that you know that. <laughs> I am, I'm not just a video game nerd. I'm actually more of a like real life nerd than anything. Something, something, I have two degrees. Oh, God. I've lived most of my life in a college, both working and studying. <laughs> in any case, so uh, you have the alchemy jugs. Catechus looks like, this was my moment, and then all. Oh. Harry will pat Catechus's shoulder and be like, it's okay. That means the salt can actually be used for real food. Yeah, this is actually a win for us. Catechus works up that. Yeah, yeah, you, using magical <laughs> salt to preserve food has some nasty side effects. <laughs> it also just tastes like, you know, that freezer taste. If something's been left in the freezer for too long, it has that when, it used, when it's used to preserve food. I see. Catechus, however, wanted to experiment with that because there's a chance that it could still be palatable, even with or even because of that odd taste. I mean, as long as I don't have to taste it. Yeah. I mean, go nuts. We have a virtually infinite amount. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, salt water into pit with the wasty. Okay, so so you start uh, pouring the salt water in. I'm going to have Ert roll an arcane, just because. Okay, arcane. Thirteen. Okay, Ert. Uh, you start directing everyone to just fountain in salt water, and uh, things seem to be going relatively well to start with. Uh, wasty seems to be uh, very much in distress as all of the salt water pours in on it. And then something odd happens, and uh, Snowblind directs everyone back, like, now, now! Everyone back up. Zan flies directly above to get a bird's eye view, quite literally. But um. Okay, uh, then you see Wasty. Um, Wasty seems to hunch and then form into some sort of spring that launches itself upwards out of the pit and away from uh, most of the salt water. And then it starts making multiple grabs out at every single alchemy jug. This is why Terry wanted to negotiate. Wait, wait, wait. Is it in the air? Yes, yes it is. Come on, Zan. This is your chance. My chance to punch it? Yep, interrupt whatever it's doing. I mean, Zan will punch it. Zone of control, baby. Okay. Zan, Zan is punching it with his magic fists. Okay, please go ahead and roll me a fist punch. Fist punch, ho! Back into the hole. Nope. 18 to hit, doesn't hit, right? That is not hit! Uh, Zan's punch ends up, once again, sliding off of a weird, crusty outer layer. Wasty seems to be holding it something like a shield to prevent Zan from damaging it. And now, Wasty is going to make uh, an athletics check. Thankfully, it flubs it. It scrabbles at all of the soldiers that are currently holding the alchemy jugs. Uh, a lot of water gets spilled around. Uh, how much water can uh, those jugs create, by the way? Uh, 12 gallons per use. And how many jugs are there? <laughs> yes. Uh, one per soldier, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So, the good news is the ground beneath Wasty is very salty. The bad news is that it's already starting to seep into the, you know, raw earth. Uh, Zan tells the soldiers to mold earth and make the earth on the bottom, like, a solid surface that it can't seep through. Like, to use mold earth to solidify the earth and make it more rock instead of, like, dirt. Okay, in that case, I'm going to have Zan roll some kind of check in order to make that happen. Some uh, will, kind of check. I will allow you to choose what kind of check uh, you use. Uh, there will be different results based on what you choose. Be a, maybe a, a survival check, being like, hey, this is how this is, we're, we're trying to make this all mushed together in the right way so we don't freaking die. I don't know. Acceptable. <laughs> roll the fucking survival. Survival check. Oh, here we go. 16. Roll to survive. <laughs> Roll okay. to survive. It's like a death saving. Play. So they seem to get the bowl in place, uh, comprehending uh, what you're getting at. But the thing is that Wasty is also acting here. And uh, Wasty, 
is not sitting around waiting for this to happen. Wasty is actually dragging a slimy tendril through the surrounding stone, trying to manually fill the pit with rough earth that will soak up the salt water. And it is now a competition. Wasty is not happy about any of this. Also, uh, we're in the middle of a crisis situation and nobody has rolled for initiative. I don't know whether this is good or bad. You get to decide. I, I mean, I think we're just assuming Wasty's initiative is last I mean, and ours is before Wasty. Now, I just want to say this is why Terry was thinking negotiation as the first possible choice, because as we can now see, Wasty seems to have a counter for everything. Ert views that as more of a challenge. I, I mean, if, if you want to go negotiate it with him, fine. But these things have wiped the Empire down to base population twice. And it wasn't the dwarves doing it this time. I mean, probably. <laughs> Any case. So, uh, Terry, did you have something that you wanted to do? Uh, let's see. Anything that's a charisma or wisdom check that you can cast on it to make it not able to act? I mean, we could do a dexterity saving throw and use Earth Tremor to try and get it to fall back into the pit. I thought it, I thought it had to fall back into the pit. It jumped up, but that has to gravity still works on it, right? It's not floating. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's back down inside of the pit. It's just using its tendrils in order to, you know, not come in contact with all the salty water. I mean, I'm ready for my next idea, but you got to go first, Terry. Terry, inject some sanity. Zan doesn't really have anything other than punching and telling the Earth, telling the people what to do. So, no, no magic. I mean, to be fair, you are fairly good at telling people what to do. No magic. Well, yeah, minus one charisma. Uh, <laughs> charisma and telling people what to do are two different things. Sure, that's fair. Sorry, I'm looking through my list. You're chill. Yeah, you know what? I'll try using Tasha's hideous laughter. <laughs> laughing slime. Great. <laughs> okay. You haven't used that uh, crystal of death zone yet, have we? Nope. Crystal of death zone. Uh, uh, circle of death. Circle it's of a death. ring that Terry has. We'd have to... That will... Uh... Why did it use the wrong one? Oh, uh... DC's the same regardless, so it failed the DC. Or failed yeah, the I think you throw. just hit the wrong button. But in any case, uh, it did fail the saving throw, which was 15. I'm going to try. There we go. There it is. All right. Incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration. Uh, what's the duration again? I'm not sure stand up affects slimes. Well, but it's uh, it's incapacitated. It's nice. That means it can't grab on to shit. It has to let go. It's true. At the end of each of its turns and each time it takes damage, target can make another wisdom saving throw. Um... So we just don't hurt it, like we don't attack it, but we just keep pouring in salt water. I think that counts as taking damage, though. Is it? Ta does it? Is it taking damage by osmosis? Uh, yes, it is taking damage when it encounters the salt. Well, at the very least, it can't dig in anymore. <laughs> I mean, so maybe... Lacey is still below in the pit. He has no idea it was Terry who casted the spell. Okay, so uh, Lacey. Um, if Terry is, uh, smart enough to actually tell people to stop attacking while, uh, the, the Wasty is stunned, then, uh, you will have a little bit of a moment. Terry, do you tell people to stop attacking? Yes. Okay, so, uh, the things desist on Wasty for now, uh, and people go to, back to Mold Earth. They are trying to smooth the walls of the pit so that Wasty does not drag them down, uh, to use as a stepping stool or climb them. Okay. Good. Also, like, as they do that, have them lower the pit a little bit slowly so that Wasty doesn't take fall damage, but slowly lower the pit as well to give make it harder for Wasty to get out. Okay, they're going to try that, uh, and Wasty continues laughing, just wiggling violently. It appears to be uh, the slime version of laughter. Okay. Yellow woobling. Yellow woobling, indeed. I see what we did wrong here. Yes. Ert pulls out a bag of holding. You guys keep them busy. I'm going to go fill this up. <laughs> Terry just... That's good. Terry's sitting there just like, I believe we should just try to negotiate with it. It's obvious that it's too big for us to handle. Or just if points we... at Bubbles. Okay, Bubbles will help you. 
Terry grows. Bubble steps forward and says, this is my moment. <laughs> Zan, Zan. Friends, not food. Zan goes to start filling up bags of holding with salt water as well. Terry is going to stop Bubbles and just be like, Bubbles, this is not a job for you. I don't know. Bubbles talks to Wasty a lot. It's true. Wasty is a good listener. Zan calls out, Bubbles, you got this. And just keeps filling up bags of holding with water. Bubbles with salt looks water. over to Terry and says, but this is my job, Terry. I'm, I'm here to negotiate and enlighten people to bring them out of the Dark Age. Yes, bring the slime out of the Dark Age, Bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles, I am very sorry to burst your bubble, but... <laughs> Sorry. The the Empire was in the Dark Ages. Bubbles points out that they had great illumination. Oh, no, we, we had a lot of public services and whatnot. We had welfare programs. We had magical lighting. It wasn't dark at all. Exactly. Yes, but only if you had an undying loyalty to this kingdom and questioned absolutely nothing. Oh, we questioned shit all the time. Uh, Bubbles actually casts a look over at Ert and says, that was different. You're dwarves. Yeah, <laughs> duh. I mean, if you'd rather, I could just shove the crystal into him. That actually genuinely might have worked if we did that earlier. Oh, no, it'll still work. Slimes up the memory of uh, uh, kobolds. The kobold behind him glares at him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Bubbles also glares at you. You're not a kobold. How do you know? you're still alive exactly god you haven't stolen anything for the last 10 minutes that too don't worry she'll just rescue some children i feel like these two are incredibly offended right now oh hell yes oh yeah like arnold is offended and he's it, and he's not any part of this yes it's true he's a were creature not a kobold at all the turtle is offended <laughs> Or it's just the racist dwarf. It's part of the package. Exactly. Like, he really agrees with those Sandstout guys. You remember them? <laughs> Ert's still disappointed. That guy just had no time for him. Oh, boy. He never even showed you the Dwarf King. <laughs> so, like, if, if you want if you want to suggest the crystal thing, I am all for that, but... Well, let's, let's try the... The, the let's... saltwater bags is going to be the... The sort of cutoff point, I feel. Plan A. Yeah, try to like negotiation. Bags and then... I feel like negotiation is plan A because you guys are running off, just like, you know, recruiting yeah. the ogre into indentured servitude because eh. Terry ran off. Eh, I mean, you know, it's more of like scaring him into submission, but yeah, it's fine. Wait, we have an ogre now? No, the troll was the troll. Troll, Damn right, it. sorry. Waffles. But, yeah. Yeah, Ur- Ur- just like, I promise not to do the troll, but if we have an ogre. <laughs> <laughs> so, because you two ran off, Terry is going to try negotiations, and it looks like Bubbles is going to help because Ur decided to suggest it. They're going to they're going to get <laughs> perfect negotiations. Terry and Bubbles are going to like successfully negotiate, and then Zan and Ur are going to come running back with water, just dump it on Wasty. That is the that is why Terry is going to have Snowblind warn Remind us. Remind me, how do, how do I flip a sprite? Oh, uh, the DM has to flip sprites, but uh, which one do you want, did you want to flip? Bubbles Bubbles is looking the wrong way. It's true. <laughs> okay. Bubbles is protecting Wacy from all of the interlopers. Exactly. So Terry, Terry, Bubbles, and Kathleen are all going to try and negotiate. Snowblind is keeping an eye out for Xan and Ert and anybody with salt water. You should probably bring Toad, too. He's, he's about at Wasty's level, discussion-wise. <laughs> You're not wrong. That's Only his hat came. Ah! <laughs> I got oh, it. Oh, boy. You move the hat! <laughs> How dare. Yes, it okay. is Wasty's now. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, uh, Terry, what do you say to Wasty? Terry is, well... I guess first going to apologize for his, you know, violent friends. Violent? Never. Uh, Wasty says, through the laughter, it's okay, I'm violent too. <laughs> I learned! Like father, like son. 
Uh, please imagine all of this in a, like, you know, very slow, woobly voice, by the way. <laughs> okay, so Terry, what do you say after that? Uh, Terry's just gonna kind of pause and be like, okay, uh, what can we do to make you not violent? I'm hungry. You're always hungry. Yes! <laughs> Meanwhile, Candy just presents a counter-argument. Kill! That was the <laughs> old Candy. <laughs> oh, wh which Candy are we on now? Whose soul is in there? Uh, God, I don't even remember. Uh, fucking... I could have sworn, uh, oh yeah, wasn't it like that one, uh, mage guy that had all the cantrips? Yeah. yeah. The high-level mage that was working for the cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, oh, shoot. Firebolt again. I mean, I mean, can Candy is a slime with a crystal crammed into it. <laughs> no, it's clearly possible, you know? Slimes and crystals can live in harmony. Terry's like, okay. You know what? Looks to Bobo and Kathleen. Just like, keep him busy for a bit. Learn a bit more about what Wasty with intelligence is actually like. He's going to contact Jochi again. <laughs> Okay, Jochi, still in the archive, still wondering how in the fuck you set this up. Still kind of scared. <laughs> He's going to ask if there's any kind of employment for large slimes. Uh, he starts flipping through books and says, Large slimes are offered positions as waste dumps for large civilized societies. Um, See? Civilized. <laughs> <laughs> but in addition to that large slimes are also offered positions as living librarians because of their ability to metabolize text literally or figuratively both uh basically when slimes eat a book they gain all of the knowledge in that book if they have the language of that book dude i wish that's how real life worked i, I know that'd be great just feed people books yeah Good fiber, you know? I know, right? Yeah, but apparently that is something that slimes actually can do, like, consistently. If you feed them a book, they will now remember every single part of that book. And so slimes are sometimes used as just living reference for uh, books. Okay. So well, while this we... is not an option here, I would like to quick paint a scenario for all of you, especially Becky. Okay. <laughs> Becky's like, oh, that's you said you're in a library? That's perfect. Or no. walks over, vortex warps wasty onto this guy. <laughs> no. Here's your new librarian. Oh, Felix, and, oh, Felix, sorry. Oh, friggin' Terry. Felix is a different world. Terry is going to sit there and think and go, okay. Ask Jochi, does that mean the people who had the slime originally could get paid an initial lump sum fee for the slime? Uh, yes, actually, like, there's actually a bounty for certain, uh, civilizations that want either waste slimes or recording slimes. They, uh, pay adventurers a small fee if they manage to bring them a viable slime that is capable of serving their needs. Is there one nearby? Like, because we we ain't hauling this thing across the planet. Do they say no to homicidal ones? No, we would. No, here's the thing. If there, even if there's not one nearby, remember you've got Terry, the man with connections, who could get people to come take Wasty for us. That is both true and horrifying. Uh, the experience, but Tina, but yeah. Tina. It's like, Erd is fine with Wasty. We just need to cut off 95% of his experience. Which is to say his body. And his intelligence. And his soul. Terry could probably negotiate with Wasty to leave a bit of himself behind for us. But Tina... But, I mean, but Tina wants it all. That's the point of Wasty, to feed yeah, Tina. Yeah, well, Terry's not worried about your soul-sucking crystal, okay? You're so selfish, Terry. <laughs> The, the the thing is, Zan's soul has been sucked so far gone from being so close to these crystals that he doesn't care about he doesn't care about Wasty. He cares about Tina more. He's fallen in love. Just kidding. Just a joke. Terry cares about money because money can buy real food. I mean, that's Wasty's motivation too. That's valid. <laughs> so, uh, however, I, I there's mean, there's a genuine point of cooperation between you. 
the, between Zan and <laughs> so Terry, when these two are going to show up later, Terry's whole argument is going to be with Zan that if we can sell Wasty, we could get gourmet cooking ingredients. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, Erd is just sort of walking by and just like, hey, um, damn it, I forgot what I was going to say. Ignore me. <laughs> I have a bag full of water. Snowblind's going to be alerting Terry to your presence before you even get here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when Ert is coming near, uh, Bubbles actually looks like she's about to tackle him to the ground. Oh, <laughs> that was it. You know, we could, we could just put a crystal on him, put a rune of summon turkey leg hook up to the crystal, cut him in for what, 20%? Very, just, I don't think a magic turkey leg is going to sustain him as much as real food. Ert's like, yeah, let's test that. Chucks in a rune of summon turkey leg. Full 50 charges. Okay, uh, you chuck it in, and the first thing that happens is every single turkey leg is spawned at once, and Wasty ceases laughing in order to consume the turkey legs, making very happy noises. See, he likes them. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to get much uh, more manageable. Looks Is Zan back too, since Ert showed up? Zan's, Zan's flying around with a with a bag full of salt water. Like, are we are we doing this? Yeah, I, I've given all the bags of salt water to Zan. Are we doing this or what? Terry's waving Zan down. Is like, I have an idea. Zan stays in the air, but says, "Tell me the idea." A slime of this size has a bounty as large as it is to be used in cities as waste disposal or large libraries as living archives. Do we got a buyer? I can find a buyer. Do you forget who I am? Who are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and, and is Wasty okay with this? Looks down to, and calls down to Wasty. It's just like, I have a job for you. There's two choices. Uh, Terry, I'm going to have you roll a persuasion. Would anyone like to assist me? Er, will Bubbles. assist. No, 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 no. Bubbles is. Bubbles is assisting. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Persuasion. So roll it at disadvantage. Persuasion <laughs> Yep. Damn it. You roll the 24, 24 Terry. 24 and 26. I'm still. <laughs> okay. So, Wasty seems to consider and then says, one more rune? <laughs> er, er, Ert's like, no, no more runes. Instead... He waves everyone. Zan. Mayo him. <laughs> Mayo no, Z- him? Zan throws his, his root of some turkey leg because screw that thing. Mayo him. Dude, he's getting more knights with more jugs to come and just dump like a hundred gallons of mayonnaise on him? Look, we have, to get, we have to do something with the ones that can only summon uh, mayo. Look up salt content of mayonnaise. Hang on a second. I'm Googling something. It I'm has... sorry, but the properties of mayonnaise are going to with how moisturizing it is, is going to counteract the salt. Well, and also the salt content's very, very low, so we're fine. And I say moisturizing, too, because I have seen people use it as a hair mask. Mmm, moisturize me. Uh, oh, God. Now I, I, have... I was thinking of it, and you do. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's almost like you All two right. are related or something. Yeah. So. Okay. So, uh... When you start mayonnaising uh, Wasty, Wasty seems exceptionally happy with this. And then, in Zan style, starts threatening the soldiers if they stop providing mayonnaise. It's <laughs> mm. uh, right. from the uh, Wait, I'm, I'm the father? I thought Ert was the father. You're all the father. <laughs> so yeah, Terry, while that's happening, just kind of sighs and goes, okay, so the two choices. One is you can be a living library and eat nothing but books. Or you could head to a city and become their waste management and eat all sorts of edible organic materials. Or I could cram this crystal into ya. No crystal. Crystals aren't edible. <laughs> No, but they may, it'll make you not feel hungry. I mean, that's sort of the defining characteristics of, as, of a slime. It's like, oh, so you want me to not feel hungry? I guess I won't be a slime then. <laughs> well, he was complaining about being hungry before. My my bad for trying to solve that. Yeah, then I'll just be an ooze. <laughs> so Terry's given Wasty his two uh, job opportunities. 
All right, Terry, I want you to roll another persuasion with uh, Bubbles' vantage. <laughs> Notice how he didn't say advantage. 30. You mean 14. Okay. <laughs> no, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, I am actually going to give advantage because of how the health action works. Oh, uh, fine. I know, I know. It's disappointing. I think Bubbles is, is capable of, of negotiating with Wasty. <laughs> yes, Bubbles and Wasty actually do know each other very well by this point. And, and anything with a higher intelligence stat, we're not so sure. But Wasty, yes. yes. Wasty, yeah. like, yes. The only thing that Terry would ask is that it leaves just a little bit of itself behind. It like not enough for it to actually mean anything too Wasty, like something okay. the size of Canny. Honestly, we'll just throw Canny in the hole. <laughs> yeah, probably. This one's lame. I'll get a new one in a few levels. <laughs> God damn it, Ert. I'm going to make you a madcap at this rate. You know that, right? I mean, that's what all the Mercury's for, right? Fuck you. Oh my God. Point is, Anywho. Wasty considers and then says, Library? Yeah, you'll get to eat all sorts of books and learn all sorts of things. Final boss, Wasty. Done. <laughs> okay. It's like, actually, that's how we lost the first empire. Okay, so, uh, in that case, Wasty is going to take Terry up on the offer to work for a library, and now it is Terry's job to get that set up. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna like, use... Like, our entire army book. is dedicated to feeding Wasty right now. I'm gonna use my subtle hook of Joji. <laughs> oh, boy. Not just contacting him, now I'm actually gonna use him. Oh boy. Hey, Jochi, you're getting fired. Here's a slime. Hey, what? Jochi. No, no, no. It's going to be Jochi is the one who needs to find a library who needs one as big as Wasty and set up the transportation to come get it. <laughs> yeah, I, would, oh, I would hate God. to be Jochi right now. Poor Jochi. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me check something real quick. Um, it says Jochi, the mainland hireling, with uh, an 11 next to it. Okay. So Jochi is going to be a bit limited. Uh, Joshi can look into some things, however, you are going to have to call in a second hook for this. Uh, it can be of any strength. Okay. Uh, let's see, we'll do Joshi, and I need to make sure that they're actually from the mainland and not, um, poor Danwald the comms guy, and the guy yeah, from Dan Supply. Wald, uh, might have a couple <laughs> of things that he's trying to call you about, but you're a bit busy right now. <laughs> uh, who is Luke Landwalker again? Uh, wasn't Luke the guy whose loot you broke? Oh god, the loot loot. Oh right, I called him in for, and I gave him a new loot while giving him a subtle hook. Yeah. Hey. Didn't Zan break that loot too? No, he did not. Because Terry told Zan that he cannot do that. Uh, Zan did see that Luke, did see Luke get a new loot, I think. Yes. You saw that he had a new Luke, but loot, but you don't know who gave it to him. But you do heavily suspect it was Terry because he and, walked off to talk to him. And I do have an incredibly strong desire to break said loot, <laughs> which is why which is why Terry told him just if you ever see us, just keep it out of sight. Now here's the thing: uh, you can call in some of your other other subtle hooks. Uh, when are you going to call in Boingo and Snowblind? I don't want to call it boy go and snowblind for wasty. <laughs> what you think that they're too good for wasty? Or that wasty might be too good for them? Who knows? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Point is, you got to choose someone. Cuz Jokey have... alone is not going to be enough. You did give me two free hooks at 13. I just never really picked anybody. Would you like to just arbitrarily say that they belong to some sort of librarian that needs a hand? Let's do it. Use one of my free hooks for that. Okay, then I'm going to remove Jochi the Hireling and one of your free hooks. Okay. All right, I'm marking Jochi as expended because I somehow get the feeling that you're going to want to reintroduce Jochi anyway. I like Jochi. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, Jochi, in the middle of a heist on a library, because, yes, I am making that canon, goes <laughs> over to the library contact list 
and contacts your other subtle hook at random. And that person just so happens to be in need of a slime for archiving purposes. And Jochi just like obviously terrified, just like says into the uh, into the phone or whatever. Who are you? How do you do this? <laughs> He's just Terry. He's just my name is Terlock, and I do this because I have my ways. Joji just like shuddering in the corner. I, I, I'm getting out of this thieving business. This is too spooky. He just oh, don't worry, thieving or not, I'm sure I'll hear. You'll hear from me again. He starts crying, and the line goes dead. <laughs> So how much is this librarian willing to pay for this gargantuan slime? This librarian, for a slime this big that has the capacity to learn so much so quickly, the librarian is willing to pay 4,000 gold. Ooh. It's quite a lot. You got kind of a big slime here with a lot of magic kicking around in him. It's kind of rare. And... I'm sure this librarian is like, yeah, no, I'll spend the money to get someone out to get it. So, uh, Zan, do you accept this compromise because it gives you a whole bunch of money? Yeah, Zan's down for money. Zan takes his bag, one of the bag of holdings with salt water in it and just dumps it on her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like to imagine you just hand the urt and her just holding it. It's like, what do I do with this? Yeah, well, I, hand, I hand multiple to you. And then I take the last one. Just hold them for a few seconds and they explode. And then I give, I put the last one, I just upend it over him and watch all of them explode. Yeah. Okay, so... Like, oh, yeah, those, don't, those aren't waterproof. Oh, God. In any case, so, uh, Terry makes the arrangement, and now it becomes a logistical situation again, because the librarian apparently has some sort of teleportation spell, but you will need to draw out a teleportation circle in order to act as the anchor for all this stuff. Okay. <laughs> oh, Art can do that. Meanwhile, Wasty is continuously demanding more and more and more mayonnaise. Uh, you're starting to run out of mayonnaise producing alchemy jugs. Anyone doing anything of those wounded soldiers? Um, no, how about the troll? We are not killing the wounded soldiers. <laughs> Boingo looks over to Ert and says, I will personally try to kill you. I know that it won't work. I know that I will make an enemy of Xan again, but I will die. Why is the kid talking to me? Baron says, Terry, because he has the same exact principle I do right now. We're not using the wounded soldiers. Uh, Farron actually speaks up and says, uh, because Boingo has been trying for the last hour or so to keep all of these people alive. Or, or looks around. Where'd that rogue go? Oh, we fed that to those. Uh, Farron says, "Well, the first thing that we did once, uh, uh, once everything seemed resolved, we offered it to Toad, and then, well, we decided to throw it into Wasty." Uh, you did that after Wasty. That explains so much. Uh, uh, Farron, Zan, Zan hears this. Farron. <laughs> Fair uh, just uh, holds up her hands and says, yes, in retrospect, it was an incredibly stupid idea, and I sincerely apologize. Oh, fair. Fair. At least Toad got the brains. Oh, that's mayonnaise. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> that's mayonnaise. One sec. Shoggy 2023. Okay, Ert's gonna go, go up to uh, Catechus. Dispose of the food from the least good to the most good uh, Catechus gives a salute and says, I hope Wasty is a gourmand, then. The what and the who now? We're going, oh, just give him a couple of runes of turkey leg, but don't throw the whole rune. Yeah, just give get rid of the turkey leg. Don't give him the good stuff. No, those are the good foods. They last forever. Don't give it's him like, the good foods. It's just like, don't use the whole rune in one go. Don't just dump it on him but make it a steady enough supply that we have time to get this circle drawn. And make sure he has to do a trick for everyone or he doesn't learn anything. You know what? I'm going to actually roll something for Catechus Temple then. Just a moment. Not, no, it's just Terry's like, really? Tricks? Or just points at Canny. He rolled a 17 on animal handling. He teaches Wasty several tricks. <laughs> 
All right, so I guess now Ert, along with uh, some advantage, because Terry is telling him, you know, what to do with the diagram. Yeah, you have to you have to draw out the magic circle before Wasty, you know, gets impatient and starts eating people. Uh, Ert, are you willing to lend assistance, or do you stubbornly insist on being the inciting incident again? No, Ert, Ert, Ert is perfectly fine with this. Whatever, dude. Ert is serious about magic. You're sure that 4,000 gold is as good as uh, a wasty amount of souls? How many slaves can we buy for that? We are not converting <laughs> slaves. We, okay. <laughs> Zan, Zan will not do slavery. That's, that's one thing that Zan doesn't do. God, we thought the Empire was evil. We forgot about Zan. Zan does not do I slaves. Know, what? Yes, you forgot you about Ur. Forgot about Ur. We'll have slaves. We forgot, but yes, I did this big thing. We forgot about Ert, but no, Zan is doing a is doing a slavery right now. No, it's a Pokemon. <laughs> Waffles is a slave because you're Pokemon. keeping him under threat. Pokemon, he's, he's my Pokemon. Waffles, do you want to work for me? My name is Waffle, and also you said that I uh, that you could make me not eat all the things that you had fed me, so I guess I have to. But do you want to? I want to not starve. Great. I also want to not starve. That, we have so that, much in common. Honestly, that motivates most people in their jobs. Yeah, I mean, I have the same exact desire. Good job, Waffle. Here, have a have a cut of frog. I throw yeah, one that, some that of the is... giant frog towards Waffle like a like a like, <laughs> like he's a yeah, dog. That is slavery, man. Uh, no, it's totally normal. His intelligence is low. Nah, it's okay. I can fix this. That does not make it any better. It makes it. it Intelligence is what Ert just shoves the two of you apart and like the difference <laughs> between slavery and a job is a contract. Yeah, the devils the devils definitely see it that way. Anyways, let's roll for that circle. Yeah, and uh and meanwhile, meanwhile, Wasty uh hearing all this just says contract. Terry just Going, oh god, no, get the circle done. <sighs> Working on it. Okay, so Ert and or Terry, this is going to be an arcane check in order to draw the circle correctly. Yeah, your arcane's probably higher than mine. Mine is a three. How about you, Ert? Mine's a seven. All right, so you get to roll with advantage. All right, roll it. 26. Okay, 26 indeed. You get the circle drawn, and now you have to get Wasty onto the circle. I'm drawing it around him. Assuming that you didn't just save time by making the circle around Wasty, which I kind of assume, given all the drawings, that you just did that. <laughs> I've drawn the circle around him. Okay, everyone ready? We just make sure that everybody else is out of the circle. <laughs> okay, so uh, you specify that everyone should be out of the circle, and then the circle starts to activate. And Wasty says, contra, and then it cuts off right in the middle of saying something, and Wasty <laughs> is gone. Oh, good. Yay, it worked. Terry, oh, first, he calls up the librarian after it gets sent and goes, did it work? Ask them to send Candy back. <laughs> no, we get, we're, we keep Candy. Everybody's out of the circle. Oh, he was in the circle. He's gone. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so the librarian says, the magic required in order to uh, activate the circle was rather intense. Um, sending a small slime back, I could just pay you for the small slime. We would like the small one back. Uh, you... No, nah, if he wants to take care of him, it's his problem now. Are you certain? Oh, we still need a waste management. <laughs> uh, well, if you insist. Um, oh, the small one appears to be trying to eat my spell book. <laughs> uh, just one moment. <laughs> oh god, don't let him do that. <laughs> In the background, Candy starts firing off level 7 spells. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh you guys didn't get into combat with Candy. Trust me, Candy was terrifying. Oh, I'm glad that Terry was able to do the same thing Zan did with the others are away. I can do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, honestly. <laughs> so, uh after a bit, uh, a winded voice comes back on the line and says, All right, all right, I think I have everything under control. Um, yes, uh, d definitely sending uh, this small one back. Just a moment. And then there is not a magic flash. Uh, however... I killed several soldiers. Can you put them back? 
like deleted them. I'm sorry, I was selecting the black lines. Well, as long as they're just nameless NPC tokens, it should be okay. Yeah, I'll but just, that, I'll just... that the ostrich guy was there. What about the <laughs> ostrich guy? Oh, right, the ostrich trainer. Yeah, hold on. The one guy who's ostrich rune just got stuck on. Itty who? Okay. The little guy pops up. No, uh, what happens is uh, the librarian focuses for a moment and says, all right, Kenny should be on the way. And then, Terry, I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, no, it's going to pop up right on top of Terry. He's doing this on purpose. Fifteen. Okay, uh, that is on the nose. Uh, roll again. That one. Okay, so Terry. Uh, Brutal. He says, on the way, he'll be there shortly. And Terry's like, on the way, what do you... And then, coming at a frankly unsafe speed, <laughs> Kenny zooms over the horizon and smacks Terry directly in the face. Uh, oh, he did not God. have a secondary teleportation spell. <laughs> Zan starts clapping. <laughs> uh, Terry, you now have an aggravated slime on your face. A slime that thought he was finally going to get liberation. But no. No, he's back. Back under the yoke. Oh, and he's not happy about it. And he's currently eating Terry's hair. Terry is going to wrestle this slime off of his face. Zan is going to watch acrobatics. and laugh. Athletics or acrobatics? <laughs> yes, and uh, Zan is just uh, contributing by laughing. Dan's having a great time. Oh, just points out that this is why he wears a helmet. 24. <laughs> oh, shit. <shut. laughs> I was going to wrestle it off and throw it at, throw it at Earth's shiny head. It just globs onto Earth. Like, yeah, how do you think I keep it so shiny? <laughs> okay, you know what? Then that's the case. Uh, just a moment. Uh, did you actually delete the candy token? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm bringing it back. Just a moment. All right. Look, being in the setting where Control Z doesn't work is hard for me. Yeah, I know. Roll twenty is like that. But anyway, so uh, Kenny does immediately glom onto Earth's head and furiously tries to dissolve Earth's scalp. But as a dwarf, Earth's skin and bones are partially made of silicone. I also use acid-resistant hairspray. This is not a joke, by the way. Uh, dwarves in the Vigan setting do actually metabolize stone. They can metabolize silicone. Dwarven beer in Vigus is literally made out of rock, somehow. Well, yeah. It is absolutely baffling to most other sapient races. You, you thought you couldn't ferment rocks, but you can. <laughs> Yeah, they've got stuff like sandstone beer or marble vodka. It's amazing. But anyhow, so uh, now Kenny is back um, and Wasty is gone. Um, and now I'm going to spoil something that happens in the far future. A couple of weeks from now, uh, you receive a letter. It is a letter specifically addressed to Ert and Zan. Oh. Okay. Um, it is marked as from Wasty, and it is written in elegant cursive. <laughs> or hands it to Zan in case it's all explosive runes. But not to Terry, the one who... I'm really hoping that this is actually because Zan and Ert tried to hurt him, but Terry was nice. <laughs> Zan reads oh, you it. you will see. Okay, so uh, Zan, you open it and read it, and you find that there is some sort of legal preamble... You read it down alongside Ert with a little bit of a spot. Yes, um, <laughs> Wasty right. is suing you for back pay. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> he can he can take the back pay from my cold dead claws. Wait, wait, Ert, er, er, you know this is far in the future. Remember, yes, er, Ert's gonna go down the list and be like, uh, uh, how 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 much is a cobalt worth? We. Fed the guy. We are not sending a cobalt <laughs> off. Sorry, how much is a bubble's worth? <laughs> we paid the guy by feeding him. However, uh, all that food only made up a portion of Wasty's theoretical wages, given the amount of time that he worked for both the Empire and you. No, 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 Wastey no, no. Also he also said that he has sent an invoice to the Empire. <laughs> this is not an hourly. This is not an hourly no, job. Man. This is salary based, homie. <laughs> He sent an invoice to the Empire! Yes! 
Zan and, Zan shreds the paper. Uh, you shred the paper, and as you shred the paper, a new piece of paper appears that appears to be glowing red, and it says, uh, contingency for shredded documents. Zan rolls initiative. <laughs> <laughs> this is the far future. Zan just rolls initiative. <laughs> Terry will 100% be in the background, probably tea time with Kethlin, just giggling to himself as he watches this. It's like, karma. Oh. Karma. Oh, boy. <laughs> just watching Zan fight uh, an anthropomorphic piece of paper. Yes, and uh, by the way, it is not actually attacking you, but there is a third contingency. <laughs> Zan just rolls initiative, period. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, I might actually just bullshit out a, you know, fight a literal legal battle uh, initiative. This is this is how Zan handles uh, this is how Zan hand, handles lawyers. It, is a 17 enough arcana to figure out what's going on with the spell on this document? Um, apparently, uh, what's happening is that there are a set of pre-written documents that uh, all exist in a distant space, and every time the previous document is destroyed, it breaks a magical seal that summons the next document. Who's it focused on? What's it focused on? Um, it is, rather unsurprisingly, focused on the library that Wasty Now works at. Um, no, how'd they target us? Uh, no, the spell anchors are on the documents that get destroyed, and on the documents that are to be summoned next. They don't actually have any, uh, you know, connection to people. Um, question, how much do they actually owe? Uh, it turns out that Zan and Ert collectively owe 800 gold. Zan will die on this hill. Doesn't matter that it's 800. <laughs> it's significantly less than you gained from selling Wasty. Nope, nope. Or it just takes the glowing the glowing letter and just crams it into one of the bags of colding that go to the Arctic. Okay, uh, so it looks like uh, the legal battle is on ice for now. Terry's <laughs> just going to contact um, the librarian. Or it's and like, just... that's a problem for future Earth. Yeah, at this point, at that point, Terry's going to be contacting the librarian and letting them know what's happening. Just so the librarian can get a laugh, too. The librarian uh, actually joins in with Terry and says, Oh my god, did they actually shred the letter? I saw some of them disappearing from storage, and I thought that the contingencies were activating, but I couldn't be sure. <laughs> it's just, Terry, how many did you actually make? Because this is a hill they're going to die on. Nine contingencies, and the last one actually connect, uh, collects, uh, connects to a golem. I want, yeah. be... <laughs> I want a golem. I want a golem. Terry, just go ask what kind of golem. Uh, it is, in fact, a shit golem. I don't want a golem. <laughs> Terry's gonna. Terry starts laughing his head off at that. Just, I can't wait. <laughs> okay, so back to present. So, uh, Wasty is now gone, and now you only have Canny. And Canny has been thwarted in his plans for revenge. He <laughs> thought that his magnificent magical soul could get his hands on a spell book and once again become a spell caster. But no, Canny is just Canny. And so Canny will plan for another day. I like to imagine he got the book and it was nothing but cantrips. I mean, considering the circumstances in Vigus, uh, most bo uh, spell books for wizards in Vigus at present are just cantrips. Ert er is just reassuring Tina that we still love her, and we will definitely feed her a large creature as soon as we find one that no one has called dibs on. <laughs> the war turtle uh, is just sitting there with the shell, uh, you know, crystal, and is just like, did everyone forget about what I was supposed to do? Yeah. Fair enough. So, yeah, Terry, going, now that we have that handled, we need to actually move on with, you know, moving. Yeah, also, considering we solved the Earth here, we should probably get going. Kathleen actually raises a hand and says, actually, on that note. Yes. The Earth salting or the going? The going part. We have a lot of injured that still need to be tended, and we don't know the local terrain. We didn't have the time to scout things out before we got here. So we're in unfamiliar territory, and we could use some time in order to make sure that nobody dies, 
and actually get an impression of what's surrounding us. CRT can handle that. Well, yes, the CRT actually are handling that. Good. That's their job. Also, we have a medic turtle. All right. So we're going to be here for a bit. We should probably figure out something to do. Zane gets out his glass blowing tools. No, wait. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to say uh, you guys have a little bit of downtime in between this and the next plot beat. Uh, I'm going to say about a day before something happens. So what would you guys get up to during that day? Mm. Ert spends the entire time trying to fit Tina on top of the turtle in the most um, dwarfy manner. Zane would probably actually help just be out with the CRT helping them scout. Okay. Uh, like, no oh my god, I'm so glad I'm not in camp. Harry is going to get some Empire updates by finally contacting Danwald, you know, with an immediate apology about taking so long. A lot has happened. Well, a lot has happened with Danwald, too. Uh, it turns out that things are getting a bit unsettled in the Empire. The second invasion fleet was launched uh, amidst a lot of fanfare, but something very strange is happening with the dwarves. Um, <laughs> Great. The dwarves in the Empire are starting to emerge from their mountain homes, preaching about some sort of singularity. Everyone turns to Ert for explanation. I mean, Ert hasn't been told shit about this. You gotta tell us if you even tell Ert. Yeah. Yeah, Terry's gonna pause hearing that little note on his clipboard and just calls out from the table, you know, to the tur turtle where Ert is and just, Ert? Yo? What is this about a singularity? Oh, uh, this fucking crazy religious thing where we're all gonna put our brains into crystals and be like this super hyper advanced race. It's fucking nuts. And this is Ert saying that it's fucking nuts. Like, I've seen people's brains made of crystals. They suck at it. Right. Okay. Um. So the Empire is having a problem with the dwarves that are chanting about the singularity coming out from the mountains. Oh. We should go east next. <laughs> the opposite direction of the Empire. <laughs> yes. Zan agrees. We should go east. Um, I'm not exactly sure how far, but we should just keep going. So are, anyway. are you saying that these dwarves are now also going to be a problem, not just the Empire? Um, um, when they said singularity, how much did they say it? Harry quickly asks. Uh, they were saying it a reasonable amount. The dwarves who came out still seems sort of lucid, but there are others who are rumored to be less lucid. Harry relays in this. Yeah, um, your friend should probably get on the next boat. Danwald then, without prompting from Earth's comment, mentions that the Empire is actually organizing a few nautical maneuvers that uh, just so happen to be around large population centers. As in blocking them from leaving or helping them to leave? Uh, either or both. Danwald isn't sure. Great. Danwald, Terry tells Danwald to not worry too much. He Panic. has been... Erd is like, no, 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 he should definitely worry. No, no, no. <laughs> he has been a good friend. Therefore, Terry will pull some strings like he always does and get him and his family somewhere safe. Danwald would very much appreciate this. Uh, he does want to know, what are the odds of him actually being able to retire? Because his retirement was coming up in two more years. Very just, that depends. Would you like to actually join me here on the mainlands, running away from the Empire? Or would you like to try and stay in the Empire and hope you'll get that retirement in two years? Ert's like, uh, Danwald's no, not two years. Nah. -uh. <laughs> Months, maybe. Danwald reluctantly says that with how you put that, he's going to bank more on uh, getting out. Then Terry is going to pull some strings and try to get Danwald and his family 
out. And so, in the midst of all of that, uh, Zan, you are out scouting with the CRT, correct? Yes, correct. All right. Uh, as you are out scouting for, uh, with the CRT, you actually encounter a couple of, you know, provincial towns, and there appears to be a couple of towns that actually have job boards with things that people need done. And on one of those job boards, you find a notice, and it appears to be a notice specifically directed towards you and the CRT. Great. It says, uh, mercenaries needed, uh, inquire with uh, such and such group at such and such tavern. And it also has several notes that says it is just fine if the people who respond are, for example, on the run for whatever reason. <laughs> Zan sighs. It's like Terry. Uh, Terry's not there, but no. Terry, why? <laughs> why Terry? And calls in. Yeah, we'll say who's who, who's with Zan right now. Uh, is the whole CRT or am I alone? Or I'll say it's uh, Pep and York who are with uh, Zan right now. It's like, hey guys, you want to go for some drinks? Uh, York and Pep just think about it and nod and say. Yeah, but they don't really have any all that much that's good around here. Yeah, it's gonna be even worse because we're going to a tavern where there's some spooks, some spies, some some weird people. So <laughs> Dirk grunts. His last experience with a whole bunch of spy bullshit was not exactly positive. Let us not forget. Yeah, if they annoy us too much, we'll just have, punch him in the face. Pokes and is like, you're not supposed to call on dead spooks anymore. It's racist. No, no, no. <laughs> Zan's like, no, 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 this time I was actually not being rude. I was just, this word for spy, spook, <laughs> intelligence. But in any case. Uh, so, um, you all head to the tavern, and uh, just a moment, I will zoop you off to another map in just a moment. Zoop, 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 Terry zoop. again leaves Kethlin and Catechus in charge. You're not with us. It's just me and the CRT. <laughs> okay. Oh, I thought you told everybody. Okay, never mind. Uh, no, this oh, is while I was just... out. I haven't gotten back yet. Yes. So I'm still out doing scouting. I haven't had the chance to come back and tell people. Okay. Does he recognize the fox? Uh, I don't think they ever actually saw the fox, did they? Oh, oops. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking for a thing. You can I've definitely me. seen Alia. I've definitely seen Alia before. Yes, uh, from that particular other negative experience that York had. Uh-huh. So York spots Alia and just immediately goes, ooh, boy. Just get some drinks. I'll you pick a table, get some drinks. I'll join you in a bit. All right. Uh, York and Pep uh, seat themselves at a table. Oh. Zan puts away his sunglasses because they're not apparently on. Oh, no, hold on. I have to fix that. I should make that a character token so I can just pull it from the, uh, from the repository. That's yeah. even bigger. Wait, what? Oh, I found it. He does it. that every okay. time he pulls okay. it out. Oh, okay. Okay, my bad. I, know, I don't think he's actually introduced himself numbers, so a, uh... Here it is. The fox, you mean? Yeah. Responding to a very specific mercenary request. Okay, so... so I've just sent you, ac um... Thank you. That fox's helps actual name. Mm -hmm. okay. That helps a lot, because I'm bad with names at times. Anywho, so, uh... Zan, you approach. Uh, uh, York definitely seems to recognize one of these people, but not the other, although it's not hard to guess why he's here. You know, they seem to be here together, having lunch together. Zan walks up and starts taking their food and eating it and saying, your note was really subtle, what's the job? <laughs> Those are poker chips, not food. <laughs> the Kitsun, uh, for some reason, seems incredibly amused by Zan's behavior, and he says... It's sort of a search and destroy sort of job, or even search and capture. But we were thinking of offering it to the entire combat reconnaissance team, as well as the regiment itself. Would you be up for earning a bit of coin? Very likely. What are the details? Well, that's something that I would actually like to discuss with the rest of your compatriots, because after all, this might involve, uh, involve them as well. If you just want to make it you, then I understand. I will almost certainly be bringing Ert and Terry along. I just want to know, what am I searching for and what am I destroying? Uh, the Kitsune grins and says, dwarves. Oh. 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 Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, so pause. Really quick, that's real heavy stuff. Um, Ert's a dwarf. 
Ert's also a, a like a dwarf has a dwarf filiac. Is that the right? Anyway, dwarf filic. He loves he loves the fact that he's a dwarf. He's a dwarf a boo. He's a dwarf a boo. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Okay. After all, we want you to hunt down some very specific dwarves who have been up to some rather troubling behavior. Uh, and Ilya, the diplomat, actually shudders. Zan cocks his head and rolls insight. <laughs> oh boy, go ahead. Like, was that an Ert shudder? Did I yeah. recognize that? Are you upset at Ert, or what's going on? Uh, only a 13 with a plus 8? No, it's still above know, 10. Right? It's still good. It's still good. Welcome to roll 20. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so, Zan, uh, you get the impression that Ilya has seen some shit, and for once, this doesn't actually feel like something that Ert is responsible for. Oh my. Okay. What do these dwarves do that merits their destruction? Well, these dwarves have gotten up to a lot of, shall we say, hijinks. They've caused a lot of problems throughout the world. And most notably, they're spreading around a way of doing things that is, shall we say, disruptive. The point is that these dwarves are, uh, insane is the best way to put it. And they are currently going around trying to sell everyone on the wonders of unification through crystal. Oh. Or other applications of crystal. And you think Ert will be okay with killing these guys when he's also in love with crystals? Well, that's the thing. Ert is in love with applications of crystals. However, the specific applications that these dwarves seem to be putting them to are... Uh... Not even something that Ert could excuse. Where do these dwarves hail from? I'll give you three guesses, and the first two don't count. Are they Empire dwarves? They are <laughs> indeed from the Empire. Oh boy. York and Pep high five behind you. Dang, <laughs> got a question right. It's the first time ever. <laughs> um, oh boy. Zan uh, pinches his his his. Oh, he doesn't have ears. He's a he's an eagle. What does he pinch? Because uh, he, he, he pinched the, uh, the bridge of his beak. No, he has a message earring. Oh, an earring of send message. Where would where would a bird? He, he just pokes where his ear hole with the finger like he's an FBI he, agent he sort he of tap, guy. Yeah, he taps the side of his head, activates his earring of send message, and sends a message to Terry. And says, hey, can you ask the asshole patrol if they have any issues with Empire Dwarves hanging around this area? Terry, do you uh, pass the question along? Uh, yes. Terry's, like, pausing at that and then looks back to Ert and asks the question. Okay. You want the hoon out? So, uh, Terry, you get a response back from a contact at the patrol. And the contact says, uh, yeah, there's a lot of really bad shit happening with dwarves right about now, they can't actually offer you straight-up bounties because the dwarves were apparently savvy enough to, you know, lodge a couple of formal complaints uh, and, you know, uh, lobby the patrol for some protection. They're currently caught up in a legal battle, but off the books, the dwarves are a fucking problem. So no bounty... Not from the patrol. Unless it can be proven that, you know, that this whatever is happening is bad, bad. Exactly. Zan asks the uh, the diplomat and the Kitsune, what's the what's the pay? Um, the Kitsune tends his hands and says the pay is 2000 gold per dwarf for a dead Ooh. capture. However, Ooh. if you do a live capture, we're willing to go up to 5000. And that's a yeah. live capture with them contained and their powers no longer usable for the moment. Their powers. Crystal powers? Correct. Many of yeah. them have melded with the crystals in violently unstable ways. And thus, they have been causing a lot of problems in a lot of different places. In Question. Fact, have, uh, go ahead. It's not here. Damn it. <laughs> okay, no question. Okay, your, your crazy hand. Question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the kid soon turns to the orc uh, and says, uh, yes, what is your question? Um, what ways did you say? Violent. Violent. Violently unstable ways. Yes. Do they have any other ways? 
uh, he nods and says, there are also violent, leg uh, legal ways, which is what they hit the patrol with. Ah, those are the lithographic doors. <laughs> I don't think York actually knows what a lithographic door yeah, is. Yeah, that's the problem, is that York, you yes. <laughs> Oh, boy. Sorry, continue. I was just struck by your choice of words. So, um, the kid soon turns back to Zan and says, if possible, I would like to have Zan, uh, uh, Terry, and Ert here before I actually start explaining the whole situation. But, while I'm here, and he orders an extra large plate of their best fries, their best fries really aren't all that good. Mm, you thought it was potato, but it's actually turnip. It's true. Z Zan hands it to, to York and Pep and says, eat up. I'm going to go get the others. York and Pep begin to eat up. And so we are going to have the others teleport onto the scene. I hope that things are centered on the... I'm uh, zoomed in, so just bring them onto the table, please. Yep. So we have Terry and we also have Ert. So uh, why does Ert continuously come out of... I don't know why he consistently has low health. Maybe, maybe we just uh, saved Ert. you don't oh, because we just never updated it after last time. You don't know how Ert consistently has low HP. Come on, D Dungeon Master. <laughs> he, he just pokes the acid his... pool. Do I have acid resist? Ah, oh, shit, no. I was gonna say he Zan shines has acid his resist. head with a slime. No, I'm not saying Terry has acid resist and Toad. Terry and Toad both have acid resist. Wait, then how is Terry's hair getting eaten? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Slowly. It was getting nommed on like a dog would nom on like your hair. Resistance is not and immunity. You know that when a slime grows big enough, it actually uses crushing damage instead of acid damage. The right. more you know. Anyhow. The more we know, indeed. So you are here, and uh, Uncle, as Terry knows him, uh, directs you both to sit and says that food is on them. Uh, you can order anything that you like. He has a couple of things that he recommends off the menu, in fact. Zan Wait, stops. do we know he's called Uncle? Yeah, did we hear, did Terry say Uncle? Yeah, Terry would just, as we walk in, it would just be Terry, would pause, see the two, and then go, oh, hello, Uncle. Zan freezes. Or just <laughs> looks at Terry and looks at the fox and looks at Terry and he goes, I mean, I see the ears, but... <laughs> Zan freezes, the CRT freezes, everyone just stares at the fox. And then Zan just in the gassed voice, Uncle? It's something of an honorary title. Uh huh. You mean you're not banging his aunt? <laughs> Indeed not. If I were, that would be several different types of crimes. Ah, uh, I see. Anyway, uh, your, your, your fox daddy here is going to uh, pay us for killing some crazy dwarfs with crystals in them. Oh, God. Not Ert specifically. Or, or, or just face palms. Terry pauses for a minute, like hearing all of this. And he's not even going to question the job. He's just. Questioning daddy? the fox daddy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fox uncle. Daddy, really? I, I, saying fox uncle is, this doesn't roll off the tongue nearly as well as fox daddy. Let's be honest. <laughs> no, but I could be a very competent uncle. Er, raises a hand. He looks at York and Pep. All in favor of Fox Daddy, say I. The entire Terry CRT just, says I. Terry just sighs. It just looks to his un his uncle. It's just like, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, he looks to Terry, <laughs> grins, and resolutely stays silent. I, if he, if, it would be even better if he said, "My name is Fox Daddy." <laughs> but yes, perfect. Terry just gives an evil look to him and just like, of course you would do this. He grins even harder and says, was there ever any doubt? But anyway, all of you sit down and have a bite to eat if you are so inclined, because once again, everything here is on the house. Terry just the fries, suck. The fries at the table and just, the fries are cold. Yeah, they also suck. <laughs> It is true. They are both cold and sucky. However, I did identify a couple of things off the menu that were actually more palatable, if you would like the assistance. Terry's staring at the menu and just... A steak. I want a good steak. Medium rare. Okay, uh, but apparently the only steaks that are on offer, and that is steaks with massive air quotes, are steaks that are made up of the, you know... 
unused parts of the cow. Ah, so like a hamburger steak. So it's not a steak. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, Zan orders one. Or would like to report that there's something very wrong with these stairs. <laughs> <laughs> they keep going into the back kitchen, and I don't, I can't figure out why. <laughs> God damn it, Shocky! <laughs> uh, but anyway, I still don't get it. <laughs> is that is that Picasso or who who did the art with the weird stairs? Perspective. You and Kami, of course. Um, Terry just kind of sighs, looking at the menu, and just what about pancakes? It's hard to mess up pancakes. They do actually do some competent flapjacks. I would suggest them. I'll take the pancakes and a side of bacon. All right. Terry gets pancakes and bacon. Uh, the bacon is a little overcooked, and the pancake syrup is not quite what you would uh, like it to be. It, it, it's a, is it literally just? A colored corn syrup? I'm going to say yes. No, it's worse. It's sugar-free. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. These people have to have some amount of standards. Zan, Zan orders uh, an omelet and... Ert points as, at Zan. Cannibal! And I was actually about to say, and as Ert stares at him judgingly, just scarfs it down regardless. <laughs> and then stares back at Ert and says, you got a problem? No. Oh, boy. What does Ert get? Ert's just chewing on his rune and summon turkey leg. <laughs> Not the turkey itself. He's chewing on the rune. <laughs> the rune. He likes to feel the tingle of the magic. It's true. Perry's just shaking his head like, I've got, we, looks to Xanage, we need to teach him the joys of real food. It gives me indigestion. <laughs> Zan's sleight of hands, the turkey leg out of his hand and substitutes a chicken leg from, from the tavern. <laughs> can I roll okay. sleight of hand for that? There's a bone in it. Erd is worried. Can I can I roll a, a sleight of hand to do it? Sure, go ahead. I want to force him to eat real food without him realizing. Uh, it's going to be perception uh, for Ert. Twenty-two. Or you can use your passive perception if you think that's high enough, Ert. <laughs> it's not. Ert uh, has no idea why the turkey leg tastes funny and it's got a bone in it. <laughs> Man, he's just like looking. He's pulled out the rune and he's looking at it. Is it a good? Is, Zan asks, "Is the different taste a, a, a different in a better way or different in a worse way?" I don't know. It just tastes like chicken. You know what chicken tastes like? Yeah, everything. Duh. <laughs> That's the baseline for taste. Well, you're eating an actual chicken's leg. Ew. Keeps chewing. Does it taste <laughs> like you? You try to find out, and I will shove my claw down your throat. Ert looks over at the fox. Like, hey. Uh, go ahead. About the dwarves? Yes, the dwarves. We have a lead on some of the dwarves that are currently causing trouble. We might actually be able to get you to one of them. Can but... you describe their beards? Uh, he gives a nod, and he actually gives a very accurate description of one's beard. Uh, it is notable that he also describes the dwarf as being in a disguise as a gnome, and so he dyed his beard hot pink. Uh, Ert nods and is like, yeah, I mean, that's standard protocol. Hot, hot pink for disguising yourself? No, the part where you disguise yourself, just in general. Okay. Or just holds so, up one of the many runes of disguise self. All right, so uh, the fox gives a nod and says, I'm glad that you actually seem to be putting things together on this, but uh, there are a couple of things to mention. Uh, and he gestures over to Ilya, and Ilya gives a deep sigh, looks to Zan and says, I was told that you appreciate people being forthright and honest with you and not hiding their attentions, intentions. Zan cracks his knuckles and says, yes. We are from an organization that has up until now been content to stick around in the shadows and not deal with things directly. Yeah, you're Terry spy friends, we know. <laughs> she gives another sigh and says, the point is that we are in a rather tricky situation that we somewhat put ourselves in. We tried to get information on how exactly the Empire technology, the crystals, worked, but we couldn't get it before the secret became rather a public incident. Uh, she gestures over to Ert for probably no reason at all. Zan looks at Ert and is like, yeah, yeah. Ert has no memory of that event. 
at all. Of course. Of course he doesn't. Point is that we were trying to get a handle on the technology for ourselves because we thought that we could uh, maintain some of the delicate balances of power that we currently have. But unfortunately, things got out of control very rapidly. We were not able to figure out the uh, the technology. We did not have the assistance of Terry on it. Good, Terry. And Good job, Terry. Excellent. Actually, for real, I'm dead serious because you spies are stupid. Anyway, keep going. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> York and Pep high five again. Terry's just going to put his little hands up in defense and just be like, hey, there's a reason why I was never valedictorian. Yes, well, it seems like we're not going to give out any valedictorian ranks just lately, what with uh, everything going on. We've had to dispatch a lot of our agents out to various different fronts of this thing, uh, and Uncle slaps her on the knee and she says, Ugh. We've had to dispatch people to Frestova and to the coast in order to keep an eye on the invasion force and the current minor civil war that is happening in Frestova. Minor civil war. Ert, Ert oh. raises a hammer. Yes, Ert. Does that mean I'm excused from writing in this journal? No, no, it does not. Uh, she does not explain how she knows what the journal is. It is easy to guess. Cool, because right now I'm writing advice on how to win a civil war. <laughs> she sighs again and says, The point is that all of our agents are otherwise occupied with critical tasks, and we are, find uh, we are finding ourselves low on direct manpower. And, on, upon consultation with Uncle here, he said that the best strategy that we could get is to actually hire an expert, that is, you, and make sure that you are informed of the situation and informed of the stakes. You're not trying to conceal anything. Honestly, at this point, we're just trying to do damage control. Ert pokes in. Harry just says, now I've got a question. What exactly did you do? What we did was we tried to put a little bit of funding behind researchers and people who might figure out the technology for us. We gave them seed stock from Shattered Empire Crystals in order to inspire their invention. But as soon as they figured out that the applications were just immediately obvious, they immediately set about, well, making their own versions of Katie. Zan just face palms. Poke Zan again. What, Ert? Are they related if they're the same uncle? Uh, I mean, you, you heard the drow call him uncle. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, I actually did. I did notice that. I did notice that. Yeah, holy cow. You did call him uncle. <laughs> wait a second. Pause everything. Are you two related? No, I'm not a drow. I'm a water genasi. Er Erd is just looking at the two of them. No, they're definitely related. Look at the ears. I mean, their faces are very similar. No, we are not related. Uncle, for his part, is just grinning wider and wider at every question. Ert pokes York. Are they related? York shrugs and says, maybe. Adoptive family? Pep, what do you think? Pep says that they're definitely related. Ilya just, like, has her face in her hands and says, Can we get your assistance, please? And at this point, Terry looks to her and goes, Of course, cousin. <laughs> it's good we keep everything in the clan. She just groans. She has her face, like, in a plate of fries that was half finished. And she's just like, I hate all of you, and I was told that I would hate all of you, and that would be part of your fee. Yeah, also, 500 gold up front. She reaches into a pocket and produces 500 gold. Zan takes it and pockets it. All right. All right. Just Terry, just... I had a lovely testing session with all of you last time. I feel like it was a little deserved today. Yes, I knew you were testing me last time. Okay, so where's this dwarf? We knew we were testing you, you knew we were testing you, and you didn't tell us things that could have prevented this entire- Ugh. Zan, Zan pipes up, we also knew you were testing him, and we didn't- we weren't even there. <laughs> to be f- just Terry goes, to be fair, you never told me about any- what of you- 
of any of what you were doing with these dwarves. That was something that we were trying to keep isolated from people who might influence things unintentionally. She looks at Earth. Oh, yeah, the organization that gives weapons of mass destruction a very dangerous use to people secretly is really scared of something bad happening if other people know, but they're still going to give these crazy seed crystals to people anyway. Xan just keeps laying it on thick on Ilya because she's an idiot. Or <laughs> er, just pokes, Uncle. Your niece is a dumbass. <laughs> and uh, he, smiling beneficently, just nods and says, "Yes, that's what I told her yesterday." Strangely, Both though, of them. she didn't. She didn't seem to, you know, listen. All right, where are the dwarves? Where are the dwarves at? I've always wanted to kill it. I mean, I've always wanted. Mm. Where the okay, dwarves? and for the record, <laughs> the reason Erd asked about the beard is he had to make sure it wasn't his mom. <laughs> Not his dad. If it was his mom. mom, the beard would have been different. Exactly. Now, Erd, Erd's dad exploded into a crystal. Oh, great. That's how most dwarves die. It's true. So, uh, uh, with that, uh, Uncle says... Well, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get you to where the dwarf is for another hour or so. There's some unavoidable delays while we wait for some information to come in. In the meantime, um, how about we all sit down and get to know one another? Zan and... sits right next to Ilya and puts an arm around Ilya. Ilya looks like she wants to cut off her own head. If you need help with that, let me know. So, uh, once again... Uh, Uncle is going to recommend a couple of the meals that he has found palatable than others off the menu. Um, Terry gets his pancakes and bacon. You get your pancakes and bacon. They're, you know, inoffensive. Uh, and then, uh, Zan, did you order some uh, chicken? I, I, no, I ordered uh, scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. You get some scrambled eggs. They are passable scrambled eggs. Could use a little bit more season seasoning. Ert spends the entire time running up the non-Euclidean stairs. He's just fascinated by this. <laughs> like, no one else understands why he's so fascinated by this. So, Ert, do you actually get any food? No, fuck that. The universe is isometric, and it bothers Ert. So, uh, you wait for about an hour, and then uh, Uncle seems to perk up and says, Ah, I think we're just about to get word, or rather, confirmation. And, uh, Ert, you notice that, uh, the doorway that you keep coming out of as part of the non-Euclidean stairway suddenly changes, and it becomes a rather familiar doorway. Oh. Is it the tavern? It is, indeed, the wizard's watering hole doorway. York, Pep, this is our future place of employment. Just so you know, this is where we're going to work after we're done with these chuckle fucks. Well, they know. They've been there several times. So <laughs> Just, I thought um they had not been there yet. It was just no, us yeah. three. Yeah, it was, it, it I was thought you sent three. them there as a as a vacation. Oh, vacation. Yes, I did. That's fair. Oh. Yeah. Ballad, 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 in ballad. that case, uh, they did go there as a vacation. And Pep looks up from her plate of fries. She did not believe that the fries would be as bad as they were. Uh, and York looks up from his empty table setting. And uh and Uncle, for his part, says, hmm, only missed two. Shame. <laughs> Terry, Uncle gets up and opens the door, and you can immediately smell decadent steak from beyond. Hurts like, guys, it's the Tavern of Memory Removal. Terry just kind of sighs. I wish we could go into the tavern. Are, are Zara and, oh, Zara and Farron aren't here to see it either. Yeah. No, Zara and Farron are actually making their way back towards you, if you like. Oh, yeah. I, if, if, are we going into the tavern, or who's go, who all is coming in? Uh, you all is coming in. Uh, all right, guys, hop on in. <laughs> all right, uh, you guys head on into the uh, wizard's watering hole, because uh, Uncle says, this is where we found the dwarf. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't assign anyone to watch him, so who knows what he's gotten up to in the meantime. We acted as soon as we could. But even so, I wanted to have a little bit of fun with you. Of course, that, that's sort of your M.O., Uncle. He gives an unabashed grin and says, This has been a very fun day, despite all the tragedies. Very good. Yes, I found a long-lost cousin. Cousin Ilya, let's go into the tavern together. 
Uh, she looks to you with a murderous expression and invites you to fornicate with a waterfowl. Zan looks back with an equally murderous expression and says, I am an Aarakocra. I do that regularly. <laughs> Ur- Urch is like, I knew it. <laughs> oh, boy. There are there are duck and osprey. Ospreys are waterfowl, you know? Urch just warns everyone that they're not going to be able to remember anything that happens in here. <laughs> you are incorrect. <laughs> Terry just says, maybe you won't remember everything in here. <laughs> Okay, now just a moment while I gather up all the tokens for copying. As you do that, Zan just keeps telling Ailea about this one Osprey Aarakocra that he got with way back in the day, and just keeps regaling her with tales of things that she really doesn't want to know about. <laughs> and I had the reach, but she had the flexibility. Now, her cloaca. <laughs> her cloaca. Let me tell you about that cloaca. Jeez Louise. <laughs> oh, boy. In any case, it's a good thing that we're at least a PG-13 stream. I mean, with the first episode having me chopping someone's head off, I hope so. Okay, so uh, welcome back to the Wizard's Watering Hole. So uh, as you are arriving at the front door, you hear that things are uh, unsettled, to say the least. Um, there appears to be a large amount of shouting and, uh, you know, a disagreement inside of the Wizard's Watering Hole. and uh, Zan through his sunglasses, can immediately see that security appears to be working overtime. You can see it through the walls. Zan calls out to the security and says, hey, security, we're here to help. Security completely unironically says, thank the gods. <laughs> Where do you want us? Inside. Uh, it's the one room with the, bit, uh, with the alchemy ingredients inside of it. Here you going, oh, so the one that Ert went into. Oh, boy. And so, as you all enter in, you see that most of the tables are not actually occupied by people at present. Um, and there are a lot of people, and I mean a lot, clustered around a gnome that looks strikingly like Boingo, only with a fabulous pink beard. Oh, Zan just kind of sighs happily, like, I'm going to get so much pent-up frustration out right now, this is going to be fantastic. Terry just reminds Zan, it's just like, go ahead, but remember, we get more money if he's alive. Sure, but I'm just going to enjoy beating up Boingo. I mean, the dwarf. <laughs> oh, boy. Terry just sits there and goes, you are literally the only one who has not let this go yet. Even Pep has let that go. I see nothing wrong with this. Because your sunglasses. <laughs> oh boy. I, I intentionally failed a perception check. <laughs> okay. So, uh, as you guys approach a little further, you see that a lot of these people surrounding the gnome, uh, or rather, quote unquote, gnome, are very high level adventurers. Um, and they appear to be bidding for the next wave of magic. And they appear to be bidding by uh, saying the names of various creatures. What are you idiots doing? Ert rolls Arcana to listen to the creature names. I was going to say, Terry's just going to walk up to one, tap him on the shoulder and go, what's going on? Get up here, Terry. You got you to show which one you're poking. Uh, the adventurer in question does not answer and in fact tells Terry to fuck off. Zan punches the adventurer in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so so Zan has punched him. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, I, I punched him. Okay, Zan, roll your attack. Sure. I'm the only one that can tell Terry to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> only uh, I'm allowed to bully the elf. <laughs> that's my job. I rolled a 26 to hit. Get fucked. Okay, you have a legitimate chance. So that's AC? No, uh, that's the counterattack roll. He did a parry. He caught your fist. And so the adventurer catches your hand, looks you in the eye and says, Aarakocra. And the gnome says, Ooh, that's a good one. I bet that'll be a big soul. So the gnome's trying to suck my soul? Uh, no, apparently the bidding isn't over. And the adventurer just looks right in Zan's eyes and says, I believe you attacked me unprovoked. This is self-defense. 
I believe that you told my elf to fuck off, which makes this very provoked. Your elf? Zan tells Terry to, sh to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Ertz, uh, what's happening here is fairly obvious. Uh, this gnome is one of the dwarves in disguise and is clearly not well. Uh, in fact, uh, Ert can see through a bit of the disguise. This gnome has a crystal jutting out of his head. Ert is like, oh god, one of those religious nutcases. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I ha let me see if something is a radius or not. Plus 15 to his roll. What a cheater. Uh, I did say that these guys were high-level adventurers. Yeah, but I mean, he told my elf to fuck off. Did I not pick up that spell? Which one? Calm emotions. Uh, I don't think you have that, no. Mm. When we were looking at your list the other day, I don't think I, I don't think that came up. No, but I could go ahead and try to defuse the whole situation. With, with uh, Zan here? Nah. Impossible. No, 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 the whole no, 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 because I am not going to ask how big the room is. I am just going to cast a stinking cloud. Oh, I thought you were going to cast fireball. That would have been very happy. <laughs> Please blame it on Toad. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sorry, he spored. <laughs> just, just cast Circle of Death. It'll be fine. Okay. All right, so let's see. Here's stinking cloud. It is a 20 okay. foot radius spell. Okay, so uh, you cast Stinking Cloud. I and... feel like that will fill the whole room. Terry and friends are not sitting out in the room. They are outside the room. Okay, so uh, you cast Stinking Cloud. It fills the room. There is immediately a great amount of coughing and a lot of people threatening you with a violent and painful death. Terry just will shout out that, you know, if everyone will stop yelling and threatening, I'll dispel it. What happens next is that someone says, Elf and Aarakocra! Fuck you, the Aarakocra's mine! <laughs> Terry just... I can see where this is going. Yeah, um, that did not diffuse things, you could say. I don't know, he, he just, he could see where this is going, so... Hey, security, why, what are they bidding on? Are we assuming that um, the, the gnome, quote unquote, uh, does not have a very high wisdom save right now? Uh, that would seem to be the case, yes. Hmm. Meanwhile, uh, security says, uh, what they're doing apparently is bidding on who can offer the largest and juiciest soul to this nutcase here. It's Earth all over again. I've been trying to defuse things, but they've been overpowering me, and administration is uh, very upset with the whole situation. Just Terry thinks and goes, well, the cloud didn't work, but he looks back. Uh, the cloud is still there. They're still coughing and choking on it. Uh, they yeah. appear to just be, like, you know, focused enough on the proceedings that they, you know, are going on in spite of it. Their exact response is, I can make this con save for weeks. <laughs> yeah, some of them actually do say that. Those are the ones still bidding. The others are actively vomiting. So then, that's the point where Terry, well, the cloud still up, looks back to his uncle and goes, Hey, would you like to help me with a spell? Uh, uncle gives a nod and says, Certainly. What do you need? Remember when Kathleen taught me and then in turn I showed you her mischief cube? Oh, you're going to get up to some mischief today. Would you like to help me boost it? Absolutely. He will dispel the stinking cloud. Okay. And he looks to the crowd and says, Everything I'm doing is completely non-lethal and not threatening. All I did was give you a little bit of stomach issues. If you don't okay. calm down now, things will get silly. Harry, roll me and intimidate. And with my super slow sheet here, I move to skills and hit intimidate. 27. 27. Okay, and I am again going to roll against you for another adventurer. And you actually succeed. Um. These people look a little bit concerned, and they say, ah, this is apparently uh, interfering with all of, the, uh, all of the negotiation. 
Uh, and they have a quick discussion amongst themselves, and it is concluded, albeit reluctantly, that they are going to take a brief break in order to consolidate their resources, but in five minutes, they're going to be back. And they're not going to have anything from you, Terry, or you, Zan. Great, get them out of here. All right. Terry's, Terry's <laughs> amused at the fact that these guys are acting like this when we have an actual connection with the dude who freaking owns this place. All right. Security. Okay. Oh. Good. oh. With them gone, I was going to ask security, like, am I free to, to deal with this dwarf? Security says, given my experiences with Ert last time around, you would be more than welcome. I've been developing some countermeasures in order to safely handle this sort of thing, but I'm not 100% confident in them yet, and I do not wish to be absorbed. Ert just shoves Zan out of the way. Harry just... <laughs> Roll Harry a strength just... check, bitch. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Terry looks over to the barkeep and is just like, can you ring a bell or sound me some sort of notification in four minutes and 30 seconds? The bartender gives a nod and promises to do so. Thank you. Thanks for a minute. It's like, uh, send one of the little beer mugs. That'll work. Okay. Then uh, he is going to assign a little beer mug to be your personal bell. Perfect. All right, Terry looks to everybody and goes, we have five minutes. I have set a four minute, 30 second timer. Let's try to get them out before the adventurers show up. Meanwhile, uh, Zan and Ert have been struggling against each other. Zan comes out victorious. The Ert is struggling. The Zan is just- Zan is not struggling. Continuously monking him. Zan is just staring at Ert and saying, can I help you? Just trying to push by and you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> Okay. I need to give him the secret handshake. The d the dwarf is crazy. Don't give him a secret handshake. Or just stares at Zane and is like, you, you understand that crazy doesn't apply to dwarves, right? Zane looks to Terry and says, please control our crazy dwarf. <laughs> um, I want to try... One of those beer mug. <laughs> I want to try stunning this guy because I, I can stun if I get a successful hit. Um, any, any opposition, any, any reason I shouldn't from the peanut gallery asking CRT plus uncle plus Ayla plus Terry plus Toad plus not Ert. Uh, uncle Ert still says, wants to give him the secret handshake. Uh, uncle says that, uh, this dwarf has proven capable of defending himself in a lot of instances. Um, if you start something, you might have trouble de-escalating again. You have a better idea. I give him the secret handshake. The gnome steps forward uh, up to Zan and says, Can I interest you in the wonders of expanding your mind and spells? Zan pushes Ert forward and says, Give him the secret handshake. Please describe the secret handshake, Shoggy. Ert walks up, gets his hand all nice and greasy with beard grease, holds it out. All and that's right. more or less it. Their beard <laughs> grease recognizes each other. The gnome gives you a similarly beard grease laden handshake, and uh, the gnome uh, drops the quote unquote gnomish accent and says, Hello, brother. I see that you're integrating well with this uh, populace. How many crystals have you grown thus far? One. Only one? Well, hell, I've seen it at least three. I'm starting on the second, but some of these jackasses stole my first attempt. Ah, well, hell, you're back with your own kind now, and we're actually working on some big projects back in the ma uh, back in the Empire, they tell me. I heard the Singularity happened. Uh, Singularity's still underway at present. They're still working on how to have the crystal grow without cracking. You know, old logistics problems. They're just nods along. It's like, I don't know where to go with this now, guys. This guy's nuts. Now then, how about I make you an offer? Because it doesn't look like you got any crystals on yourself right now. I could probably start another seed in you, if you like. Oh. Or are you one of those purest dwarves? Oh, boy. Okay, Ur Urd is in a tricky situation now because he's totally a purest as, dwarf. As, Zan, as Ur is having this conversation, Zan gets around behind the dwarf, looks to Terry and Uncle again to be like, to be like, 
I, you guys, I asked for ideas. No one gave me any. I'm going to start punching uh -huh. if no one comes up with an idea. York actually holds up a hand and says, I have an idea. York does? Yes. Okay, York, what's your idea, Mr. York Big Brain? holds up a rune of Mold Earth. Uh, it is about two minutes until the adventurers return. York casts Mold Earth, and all three of you drop into the basement. Perfect. Well, all right, then. Here, uh, I'm actually going to put you in the little, like, swirling vortex room down here. <laughs> oh, yes, my old workplace. How is this supposed to help? Uh, the adventurers won't come, and I can just beat the, beat the dwarf down. That's all I got. There, he's going to look to York, and he's just like, is this because now Zan can beat the hell out of the dwarf without much interference? York uh, says, it's mostly so that the adventurers don't find you right away when they get impatient. Ah, you know what? I'm going to go talk to our barkeep friend, uh, you know, our bar owner friend. Uh, see if there's maybe a way he can help us distract those adventurers. Uh, York gives a nod and says, how about you take Pep and Farron with you? I'm going to stay here with Zara and see if we can slow the adventurers down just a little bit. We might start a scrap and we might lose, but... If that gives you a little bit of extra time, then it'll be worth it. Harry nods, looks down to Toad, and then looks to Uncle and goes, would you two like to join as well? Uncle uh, looks... Or would you like... Looks to the Uncle and goes, wait, you might have more fun with the adventurers. Uncle looks like he was about to say something serious, and then he immediately brightens and says, you know what? You're actually right. I can think of a whole <laughs> bunch of interesting things to do. <laughs> And just, Terry, just goes, maybe I can introduce you to the bar owner later. <laughs> Indeed. We still have to negotiate a lot of things with that bar owner, don't we? Anyway, don't waste time. Go, go, go. All right. So Terry's going to take Toad, and it was Pep, and who else? Uh, Pep and Farron. Pep and Farron. Uh, we're not giving the, the, the diplomat an option. She's going to stay down there to help distract the adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yep. Her diplomacy <laughs> skills are being put to the test. I, I like to imagine Zara and York just carrying her by the arms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, actually that. That's hilarious. Come on, spy lady, let's get going. We have some charisma checks here. Now, down here we have Ert and Zan uh, talking to the Noble Nell. And uh, Noble Nell is, of course, a dwarf who is heavily in disguise. That is, disguise in large, sarcastic air quotes, of course. Zan rolled initiative. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but I rolled initiative. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's fucking do it, then. Well, it's probably a good idea that we're surrounded by ghost shit. Yeah, we're... I mean, I'm, I'm here. Oh, it beat me on initiative roll. Uh, but, like, we gotta deal with this dwarf before something stupid happens. All right, and you're gonna use violence to do it? Look, I mean, Zan all I can say is Ert and the dwarf see Zan go into combat stance and are like, cool, you handle them. Gestures Wait, cause, cause, oh, with, a, with the ghosts? <laughs> gestures at the dimensional hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, God. that's what's happening. Because I mean, Zan asked, hey, any ideas with handling this dwarf? And he was dropped into the basement. And so Zan's, Zan's mind says, oh, fight with no witnesses around. Great. Well, hey, that <laughs> works well enough. Ert, meanwhile, is like, who is this? Noble Nell goes first, uh, unless Ert wants to roll initiative as well. Ert doesn't want to roll initiative. He wants he wants to roll Arcana or Perception or something to try to figure out who this is and what's wrong with them. Okay, Perception. Which perception is garbage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 19. Nice. Okay. Nice. So uh, this is one of the dwarf scouts. Apparently, this was a dwarf scout that was also uh, equipped with some experimental stuff that would allow a crystal to grow inside of him, harvesting his own soul energy as he got more experience. Like inside stomach? Inside butt? Inside what? Inside he head. Of his forehead. It's sticking out of his forehead. Oh, I thought that was cosmetic. Nope. <laughs> like you're one of the brain crystal guys? Yeah, I always wanted to one... meet one of the brain crystal guys. And Nell says, well, now you have, brother. And I gotta say, What happens is... if I pull it out? I don't want you to pull it out. It's how I still connect to my meat. What happens if I do, though? 
I don't know. I probably really pissed at you from inside the crystal. I put on the free will rune, and he points, and there is in fact a sticky note that says free will. Oh no, it's like Warhammer Orcs. Erd is just like, no, 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 no. I, I mean like the, te- the techno-magical connotations of it. Do you form a new crystal? Anyway, he's just going to keep nerd talking at the sky while Zan just looks on in horror. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have uh, Ert go ahead and roll Arcane. Ert rolls a 15 to have a deep, in-depth discussion with this guy about the crystal jammed into his brain. Okay, so I'm going to say that uh, Noble Nell does not do anything on his turn, and in fact, he is so baffled by all of the things that Ert is uh, talking about that Zan will have advantage on an attack if he wants to attack. Oh, yeah. Zan, I'm... grab the crystal. Yeah, Zan goes in for a punch to, uh, to stun. I'm trying to stun this guy, and then we can extract the crystal in a second. Um, so Zan goes in for a punch with advantage, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Punch with advantage. 24 to hit. Uh, that is definitely a hit. You do the seven bludgeoning damage. Uh, uh, what's the DC of the con save? Uh, it'll be... 16 now? No, it's proficiency bonus plus... Is uh, it plus my wisdom? My wisdom went up to five, so that would be... Yeah, 16 now. Proficiency plus wisdom. 16, 16, 16. Uh, okay. I don't have a button for it. I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, he aced it, though. Oh. And he looks back to you uh, indignantly and says, The fuck? Are you one of those Luddites? Uh, I keep punching because I have two attacks for every action, plus I have a bonus action for those. So, so my, my part of the same action is another punch. Um, is it still with advantage or not? Uh, not with advantage this time. Okay. 27 to hit for 10 damage. That's 17 uh, total. And can you do another stunning strike? or Every time I hit, I can do a stunning strike, baby. Okay. Another stunning strike. And he's stunned. All right, that's my first action done. I did 17 damage, and my next action is I'm pulling the crystal out of his forehead. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, okay, go ahead and roll me athletics or sleight of hand. Uh, athletics is Meanwhile, done. I assume Er is just like, what? No, stop. I wanted to talk. <laughs> do I get advantage since he's stunned? Uh, yes, yes, you do. 25, not 20, baby. Okay, so Zan. You remove the crystal from this dwarf's brain. Uh, the results are not pretty, but apparently also not explicitly harmful. Um, it was directly connected to his gray matter. There is literally now a hole in his skull through which you can see this dwarf's brain. Um, uh-huh. And the dwarf Brody. is still stunned. The crystal in your hand starts vibrating. And the dwarf himself starts groaning. I shove it into uh, into a, a bag of holding I got from one of the bags of holding that had salt water in it. Okay, you stuff it into a salt water bag. Uh, the crystal seems to stop humming there, and the dwarf goes, "Whoa, what the, f- what, what?" Hey, buddy. Hey, we come to help you. You were we heard you were in trouble. Um, we're here to help you out. Um, you also- got possessed by a crystal parasite. Which Why was also it? you. Uh, say again, Zan? Why is you, you you dyed your beard all pink? You're all messed up, man. We gotta get you out of here. Let's go. Or it's like, you look dangerously elf-like. Zan uh, literally picks yeah. up the dwarf without, without him responding and just starts carrying him out. Oh, God. Okay, so either of you may roll either arcane or medicine. Uh, or arcane, I'm not, I'm not good at this stuff. No, 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 Ert should roll medicine. Uh, I can roll a medicine. I got a plus five to medicine. Here, you roll a medicine to see if it beats my 18 in Arcana. Okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Zan's uh, like, yep, that's a brain. That's a that brain. Is, that is indeed a brain. And uh, Ert, something occurs to you. The dwarf's state of delirium and uh, confusion, um, this could be a very interesting thing. Apparently, his brain structure and chemistry was changed by having the crystal in it, and uh, removing it is going to have some very strange effects on his personality. Hey, the job was to get him out alive. He's still breathing. We're going. I mean, look, <laughs> you survived a lobotomy, buddy. Congratulations. 
or cast disguise. Uh, 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 is it disguise self? Oh, it can't. You can't no, disguise others. No, I'm just gonna reduce him. Oh, make him teeny. He's pocket sized. Okay, Zan sticks him in his pocket. <laughs> oh God. And we just walk out. Okay, you know what, Ert? I'm gonna have you roll a fucking arcane check just to m- pull that off. What? It's a spell. Enlarge and reduce. But it usually Ert, Ert gets a twenty people... on it. The no, the just it's all very casual. Not, not yeah, easy. like reduced person is not supposed to make you that small. Ert somehow abused the spell to make the uh, dwarf that small. Ah, triple cast it. <laughs> Zan just shoves the the pink dwarf into his pocket. All right, his shirt, po- his shirt pocket. Yeah, so let's walk out. Okay, and, just... and uh, Zan, uh, yes. roll me a stealth or sleight of hand with advantage. So before before I go out, oh, I just took the glasses instead of the rest. Before I go out, I will put uh, I will touch my earring and tell Terry uh, package acquired, leaving. Uh, clear the clear the way out, please. Terry's going to respond, I am heading up to the bar owner. A, uh, I will see what I can do. Zan will roll yeah, this, ha- this happened pretty fast, actually. Terry wouldn't even have time to, to, uh, to talk to Addy yet. I got a 25 stealth check. Like, I imagine we're going to walk by and they're like, where did they come from? Hey, uh, Dave! Did they get there? Dave! Dave! Dave. Uh, shut up for just a moment. Ah, uh, Dave! You were supposed to roll with advantage. Oh, I'll roll again. I apologize. Okay, 25. Still 25, but just wanted to check, just in case. Dave! All right, uh, Dave looks over to you and says, Ah, Zan and Ert, what can I do for you, for, for you buds? Hey, hey, can you do me a huge favor? Well, it depends. What you got? You just go talk to those adventurers and have them look towards the Seeker while we walk out the door? Uh, Dave thinks about it and says, You know what? Yeah, I think I can do that. But Thanks, tell Dave. You what, you're the best. Or you could just carry the snow. Oh, that too. That's also valid. Well, hey. I'll tell you what, I'll do whatever you like, but I am going to ask for something in return, because, you know, favor for a favor and all. What would you like, Dave? Uh, Is Dave it souls? <laughs> Dave shakes his head and says, nah, souls are so last week. Tell you what, how about each of you gives me either a bit of hair or a bit of feather? Uh, uh, <laughs> Ert sees no problem with uh, this at all and starts plucking his beard. Ah, uh, this one's <laughs> great, never mind. Here's a good uh, one. Uh, Zan, does, does Zan, uh, Zach, Zach doesn't want to do it. Does Zan want to do it? Uh, here's a question for you. Can you have Zan roll an insight for me, please? Yes. I don't want a voodoo doll of Zan to be exist You're anywhere. I'm not going to use it for 24. anything weird, are ya? Okay, um, so he never specified who it had to be from, and you have someone in your pocket. Zan gives hair from the dwarf to, da- to Dave. Uh, Dave gives a nod and says, Hey, clever. Nice one. Oh, I'll be here for that sometime. All right, what you want me to do? Can you, uh, there's a group of adventurers at the, up in this room up here. Can you uh, come and just distract them and keep them away from the door while we leave? That's it. Uh, Dave gives a nod and says, Leave it to me, dudes. And, Thanks, uh, bro. And Dave goes over in order to distract the adventurers. And the way that he does it is he gets up on stage with the speaker and begins doing hilariously eldritch shit. Like he opens portals to different planes of reality and those planes of reality begin playing in the Seeker's play. It is utterly captivating in the fact that uh, watching it makes your eyes bleed. Zan is incredibly grateful that he did not give Dave a feather. (laughs) All right, we, we leave, we leave. All right, we do indeed leave. And so, y'all get the heck out of Dodge. Now, let's cut over to uh, towards Terry. So, Terry, you see Ert and Zan uh, hastily making their way out of the bar. Um, it seems they uh, pulled off whatever they wanted to pull off. Uh, but now it's time to actually talk to Addy about all the adventurers who are probably going to be irate that their dwarf has gone. And technically breaking rules in the bar. It's true. They are breaking a lot of rules. I mean, one of them has just been sucked into another dimension by a tentacle, so. <laughs> so, you know, when Terry gets it's up there... It's a Slanesh there... dimension, by the way. I hate you. Well, I have one quick question before you continue. What would that be? Wouldn't Terry just say, this sounds like an uncle problem? 
<laughs> well, that depends. Terry, what do you think? Camera's upstairs, it looks like. Yep. Uh, one moment. Yep, I've just moved everybody upstairs. I'm assuming Addy knows it's Terry, so he's letting it, them all through. Oh, yes. So, uh, Addy, Toad, uh, Pep, and Farron uh, heading upstairs to Addy, and Addy uh, opens the doorway uh, to his desk, and Addy is just, like, hunched over his desk, obviously in the midst of something like a migraine. Yeah, so... Sorry, I'm just moving everybody. I'm just, I'm just gonna pretend they're all in the room, because it's a rather small room. <laughs> Terry's just, you know, good day, Addy. Addy just gives a nod and says, I certainly hope that it's going to be better than it has been. Well, I have some good news and some interesting news. The good news appears to be that the dwarven troublemaker has made his way out of this place. Thankfully, I didn't have to activate any of the security golems, which the adventurers would have considered to be free experience points. Terry, what? Friend. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> Uh, remember the deal that you started to make with Addy, Terry? Yes, the one with the, um, that the spellcasters from the college could come and take a break. Now you know why that rogue isn't a, your hook anymore. Exactly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but anyway, aside from, uh, Shoggy's random doodles. Hey, uh, that's my crystal! They're all, Give it they're back. all there, l literally voluntarily. Yes, and also, no, you are not going to get the crystal back. That is the hand-spearing crystal that Ert was waving around like a jackass. <laughs> Put it back, Shoggy. So, yeah, Terry goes, yes, we were the ones that came here to deal with it. In turn, however, it seems that those adventurers were breaking quite a few of your rules. Indeed they were, but they were also strong enough that they could basically ignore all of my security systems. Again, the golems. Oh, I was so worried that I was going to have to get another set. Oh, boy. Well, they're currently enraptured by something or other. Zan said that they were being distracted. I gave. Uh, Addy gives a nod and says, I had heard a little bit about that. Some interesting screeches and... Uh, holes in reality have opened up. You hear echoes of Eldritch screams throughout the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just Dave doing Dave things. Yeah, everyone loves uh, For Dave. some reason, the Eldritch screams seem to be playing Piano Man. <laughs> 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 uh, I can't do it. Anyway. <laughs> Anywho, so, uh, Eldritch screams, uh, Addy seems perked up by that and says, that gives us a little bit of time, but I still don't have a lot of good options on hand. I I think if you'd be willing to make a deal with... I think that was Dave. He might be able to help. Yes, but <laughs> last time Dave asked for a couple of hairs, and I don't have any hair! Terry pauses and just... Did he specifically say your hair? Addy raises a finger, lowers a finger. <laughs> 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 Zan sneezes somewhere. <laughs> Toad, Toad oh, hacks up a bit of hair. <laughs> I mean, legitimately, Toad, uh, Toad might not be able to digest hair, so he could legitimately do that. I like to imagine a little clump like a hairball is just covered in mushroom goo. And Toad is just like, look, Dad, I made this. <laughs> oh, God. Just... Terry just kind of stares and just kind of looks to Addy, go, one, I'm sorry. And, and two, uh, I mean, those people are dead, but it is hair. Addy just gives a nod and mm -hmm. says, Terry, I'm realizing that this is going to put me in your debt. And Terry just kind of stops and looks at the crystal where he's got a class, probably a classmate at this point, just chilling out in there, just... We so, uh, something out. <laughs> Larry, uh, please imagine when you look up to the crystal, you do see, in fact, a classmate. It is a classmate who was an unabashed asshole who thought that he would be intimidating enough for that not to make a difference. It seems that his past caught up with him. This is probably the best outcome. <laughs> just Terry, just I think we could work something out. 
you better not free him. <laughs> he looks no, he, he's smiling. This is cathartic. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> oh boy. In any case, Addy just uh, gets a serious look on his face and says, "If you can make sure that the adventurers get out of here without causing any more damage." then I will personally consider myself indebted to you. Mm. I'm just staring. Nods and... Uh. Terry is saying yes. Uh, he's going to look down to the hairball and <laughs> cast Prestidigitation on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for what purpose? Uh, he does not want to pick it up covered in mushroom goo. <laughs> okay. This should now just be a pile of hair, and he'll pick that up. <laughs> You pick it up, and uh, so when you pick it up, Addy looks to you and says, you're just going to negotiate with uh, Dave in order to get something done, or do you have a more complicated plan? Terry just looks at Addy, just shrugs. Says, you never said how I had to deal with this for you. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> you just, Terry, just kind of chuckles, and just like, you've dealt with uh, my colleagues long enough. I thought you'd know better. <laughs> Addy gives a sigh and says, In my defense, I've had a very trying day. And don't worry, unlike my colleagues, my motives are a little different. I'm going to hold you to that, then. All right, so Terry, what do you do? Uh, Farron and Pep are here to back you up. One, one second. Meanwhile, this whole discussion, Farron and Pep are looking up at the wizards and crystals and, like, pointing out amusing moments. <laughs> that one's wearing socks and sandals. It's like, that one's not even wearing a hat. How can you be a wizard without a hat? They just see nothing wrong with the wizards and crystals. <laughs> oh, no, it's totally deserved and normal. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like everything about this is normal, and Addy is like, wow. Uh, and I have also, been like, way too tense over this. Also, uh, just imagine, like, you know, Pep and Farron have to live around Ert. <laughs> All part of the job. It's not that it's not normal. You know, to have people trapped in crystals. It's just that we've all lived around Earth. <laughs> exactly. And, and, so... and then they look up in surprise like, oh shit, you're done? <laughs> <laughs> so Terry, I'm going to look to Pep and Farron and go, all right, so here's the deal. They're currently being distracted from what I've been told. So I need you to meet up with Earth and Xan in order to get that dwarf out before I can... Have a little fun with my uncle. Uh, Pep actually says, from what I saw of them getting uh, getting away, they were actually, you know, taking the dwarf out. Like, at, they were at this time, him. Uh, go ahead. At this time, Zan comes over the earring. Okay, we got him out. You guys are good. <laughs> There's a pause and he goes, okay, then. You can either sit back, have fun, and watch me and uncle do our thing, or you can join Ert and Zan. Um, Farron says she wants to watch. Pep says she wants to stick around Zan. I like to imagine Pep is just carried out by the bouncer. <laughs> like, excuse me, I'm being bounced. <laughs> out of the way, folks, I'm being bounced. Legitimate bouncing here. Oh, God. You know what? That's canon. She's just like, uh, all right, well, I suppose I should go check up on Zan and Ert. And she just immediately, okay, okay. <laughs> Terry just, huh, very attentive security in this place. Addy says that he loves his security personnel. Uh, his security personnel um, have always been very diligent and understanding of the strange needs of the, <laughs> of the wizard's watering hole. Meanwhile, Ert and uh, Zan just, like, watch as Pep basically body surfs on air out of the wizard's watering hole. Pep, welcome back. Ert's like, I, this place is weird. This place is great. So Terry, Toad, and Farron head back down. Okay. Oh god, the cameras <laughs> ping us. Sorry. I was uh, I was heading down to I was actually already moving my tokens. Okay. So heading on down, uh you uh, see the bartender and the Get off the says, roof. <laughs> <laughs> the bartender says, uh, my apologies, sir, but I couldn't actually ring you for your uh time limit. That's okay. We're all done now. Thank you, though. Not a problem, sir. Please let me know if there's anything else that you would like. 
Of course. Uh, Terry eyes the menu and thinks of Uncle getting you to feed yourself before going to the place with all the best food. <laughs> Terry just looks to Uncle and just goes, one, how dare you? Two, I have an idea. And what would that be? As he holds up the small pile of hair. <laughs> uh, Uncle, uh, his eyes widen a bit and he says, you have some tricky magical scheme, don't you? Magic on my behalf? No. But I've heard that Dave only needs hair. Well, hmm. Do you suppose I could get a, a, a bunch more hair from the people around here? I did spot a kitsune on the way in. Terry just... You are... You are a... I'm not there. <laughs> yes, he saw a mirror. Terry just kind of shakes his hands and one hand and just goes, no, 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 I don't know what Dave does with the hair. Dave, it can't be anything too bad. Mm. York's like, yeah, Dave's a good guy. As the eldritch screaming continues. Dave, yes. it's just like, the fact that we can get around the loophole of him wanting hair by just giving him anyone's hair, I have my doubts. Uh, Zan, choose Farron or Zara. Uh, Baron. Okay, you're here now. Continue. <laughs> okay, you are now choose, uh, playing Farron. I got York. Because York's the <laughs> best. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. We need to deal with the adventurers because they're too strong for the security. Patty has told me that he would owe me a debt if I can help get these adventurers out. Uncle uh, widens his eyes and says, Terry, you snake. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't expect you to handle things this deftly, but that's more fool I. Oh, boy. So, what do you need from me, then? I thought you could have some fun with Dave. After all, we need to get the adventurers out, and Dave seems to have the power to do so. Dave has quite a lot of very strange abilities. Very well. I'll see what I can negotiate with him. How does that sound? Of course. Terry hands over the hair. <laughs> okay. Enjoy. It's in a little it's in a little pouch at this point. <laughs> okay. So Uncle is gonna go talk to Dave. Meanwhile, the adventurers are staring into the gap between realities as uh Relay, you know, collectively does a musical number set to, you know, Cthulhu Photogen. Cthulhu Photogen. <laughs> Classic. Exactly. Words that cannot be spoken, but are still set to rhythm. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and York is just yelling suggestion. Encore! <laughs> oh boy. So, uh, with that, uh, Terry, the adventurers still seem to be captivated by Dave's little performance. Uh, Uncle is going up to have a negotiation with him. Uh, does Terry have anything that he wants to do to secure the, uh, situation, or does he want to trust that Dave can handle it? Mm. Terry will mention to Dave that he's got his, um, the Nather's Mischief spell, you know, to help out, for funsies, for giggles. Dave says, oh, oh, I have an excellent idea. Cast that at the height of the performance, and we'll have some real mischief up in here, bud. As long as it helps us get these adventurers out of the bar. Oh, it'll do that. <laughs> Does he accept the hair from Uncle? Uh, he accepts the hair from Uncle, and the performance gets even more wild and captivating. Uh, you see several people's eyes bleeding, uh, like possibly more volume of blood uh, than they have in their body. Jeez Louise. Terry does mention that, you know, we shouldn't kill the adventurers. Uh, some of them deserve it. Oh, Dave, uh, Dave tells you that it's not a problem. It's not their blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just then. blood right. from the plane of blood. Great. From the, the plane A positive of plane, not the O plane. That one takes a reservation. Exactly. That's, Shall I? That's great. Okay, so, uh, Terry... Uh, you are witnessing, as the performance goes on and on, uh, things get into a fever pitch, and it is time, at the very end, to roll for uh, Nathier's Mischief. This is going to be a Deception or an Arcane. Oh, okay. I was trying to find the spell so I could actually roll it. 
But deception or arcane first. Got it. Yep. Mm. I'm going to go with this one. 23. Okay. With that, you cast Nathar's Mischief at the height of the performance, and there is a horrible screeching from beyond the bounds of reality that somehow sounds like a sitcom laugh track. <laughs> and with that, one by one, the adventurers disappear with uh, shouts that can be considered partway between horrified and elated. There is to looks at Dave for a minute and just... They're going to end up safe, you know, back on Vegas at some point, right? Oh, Dave says, ah, oh, yeah, they actually Ooh. arrived back an hour ago. Well, uh, York is just sitting there is like, this is why you should never go over level 10. <laughs> <laughs> Terry just kind of, right, okay. And kind of looks down at all of the blood and just, who's, okay, who's cleaning this? <laughs> Do we have to clean that up? Janitorial will take care of that. Uh, Dave waves a hand and says, ah, don't worry about that. I'll handle it. And as he says that, the blood starts slowly seeping toward Dave. He would be a warlock. He would be, or warlock, or not even, maybe not even a warlock, maybe a, a, a patron. See, Terry is totally right to, to enjoy Dave's company, but still be very wary of him. I like to imagine this tiefling mm -hmm. singer is just like, Huh. <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. And Dave says, "By the way, thank you for uh, adding that little bit of the performance to the height of the uh, to the height of the song. Like, I've got some friends who really wanted to put on a show, and they just really wanted the performance to hit the peak at the very end. There, I think you made their whole. Uh, well, that doesn't really translate into Euclidean time. Don't worry about it. Uh, right. I mean, my point is that a bunch of amateur theater experts." They really love what you've done with the place, man. They really appreciate all the help you've given. Of course. Terry looks to his uncle. Did uncle enjoy this? Uncle has indeed enjoyed this, although he has an expression of like, dear God, did I actually go too far this time? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, York and Farron are just like, yeah, that's normal. This is the normal. Yep. What about the diplomat? Is, has the diplomat greatly underestimated Terry? The diplomat is currently clutching her dress and saying, I, I want to go home. I, 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 can I go home now? Can, can I go home? York uh, probably is just like leaning an arm on her shoulder and saying, only if Terry wants you to. That would be creepy. <laughs> so uh, please imagine all those adventurers that disappeared we're treated to a 15-hour rendition of Swan Lake by Eldritch Horrors. That's both terrifying and impressive. Beings beyond mortal comprehension in tutus. Exactly. <laughs> it's okay. They're level 15 plus. They'll be fine. <laughs> God. Yeah, Terry's just gonna say, well, I think we're all done here. Um, Seeker's like, I'm a named character too. He looks down to one of the little mugs and writes a note down to Addie and just kind of looks to the mug and goes, can you give this to Addie? All right. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, uh, he, he can, in fact, give this to Addie. The little mug? Yeah, the, the little mug can get up to Addie. It's fine. <laughs> Are the mugs also <laughs> scared? Yeah. Uh, now that you ask, yes, um, th this was not in their job description. <laughs> they Terry thought they were just going to be serving drinks to people. Terry just pats it, like, on its rim and just goes, it's okay. It won't happen again. Probably. Oh, boy. And so the mug scoots off in order to meet up with Addie. It's just to let him know that the deed is done. <laughs> Meanwhile, the seeker is just like, Hey, uh, Dave, can you teach me to sing like that? And Dave's like, sure. <laughs> Small price. Quick deal. I just need some hair. I <laughs> need some hair. You're a tiefling. You're used to this sort of thing. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though. Legitimately, yes. Anyway, so. Have you considered well, multi-classing out of Bard? With those, uh, with the CRT crew apparently moving off to do their own uh, little group for a second, Terry's going to look to Alia and just... 
So, I believe we've handled the problem. He just slowly nods. And we got you your dwarf. Alive. Alive. Apparently they took the... I don't know about his condition, but he's alive. That was We have two of him. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You can decide which half you want. Like a wishbone. Except one is meat and the other is crystal. As long as he's alive, that's all they specified. We don't have to do anything more than that. Vegetable or not, he's still breathing. Also, uh, I want to know, are you going to try and double charge them because the dwarf and the crystal are separate entities? Zanwell. <laughs> no, Ur- Urd votes for only giving them one. He'll keep the crystal. Oh. oh. He doesn't need the meat for shit. I'm actually okay with this. Ert explains that this is part of dwarf ancestor worship culture. And if you say no, you're being racist, and being racist is bad. Terry said so. <laughs> there. I hate you so much, Shoggy. I want you to know this. Oh my god. But, but you can't you can't hate him because that's racist. Terry said so. Yep. Exactly. I, I will Oh my god. You can't do anything because that'd be racist. Nerds. So, uh, Terry, you are speaking with Uncle and Ilia, and Ilia is just staring off in horrified fascination. It's just like, Terry, I always thought you were a bit soft. I have changed my stance. Terry just looks over. Soft because I wouldn't reach down to your cutthroat tactics? Frankly, yes. (laughs) And it just, there's many more ways to get things done than... You know, killing people. Like, I, I want you to understand that she views you as, as the monster here. <laughs> Zan's not present, but when Terry says there's ways to get things done besides killing, Zan kind of, like, looks out into the ether and, like, I feel like someone's judging me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Judging you in your bag of salt water. Maybe. Zan sneezes. <laughs> so, with that, um... Do you have any last things to say to Ilya and Uncle, or are you going to mo- transition over to wrap up time? Uh, we need. To, are we going to do the dwarf handover at wrap up time? Yes, we're going to do the dwarf handover at wrap up time. Okay, let's we're do gonna that. head back. Let's head back. Terry, like Terry, just kind of is just like yeah, you know, violence isn't always the answer. Sometimes he, there's worse answers than violence. Ilya says that. For all that you assume of her, she was never a particularly violent operative. No, but the college very much appreciated the idea of slitting a throat or two. She looks like she's going to object, and then intelligently does not. (laughs) Toad is uncomfortably close to her. (laughs) Toad is breathing on the back of her neck. Your hair smells like hair. Is Toad that tall now? I thought he was still really no, short. No, but her hair's that long. <laughs> it's true. No, I meant the breathing on the back of her neck part. Oh, that took effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took like a cardboard tube. Anywho, so with that, we are going to transition over to the wrap-up portion. I am the knight. So this is not going to be in-character stuff. Uh, I'm going to transition us back to the uh, camp map, but I will be asking you a couple of questions. Okie dokies. The answer is yes. All right, so I'm going to put you guys back in to the thing. Dum dum. My first question, though, was after Alia gets back and reports on everything that happened, how terrified of Terry is the college? Um, Terry is quickly becoming a valedictorian. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. And there's Zan with his glasses. I really do have to add the glasses to the character list. <laughs> Just so that the, uh, we can be consistent about that. And there's Ert. And here is Toad. I like to imagine that his college, his specifically, looks like that one from Skyrim that's just completely, like, in shambles. The Skyrim college was just sad if you've played Oblivion. You look oh, at no, it go, it is oh sad, yes, but... you're the grand master of these seven people. Good job. <laughs> It is sad, but I imagine that that's what Terry's college looks like. After all, looks can be deceiving. Of course. And so can Terry. Why did you rename Canny to Poopy? Because he's on poopy duty. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, uh, you giant nerd burgers. Uh, we are back at the base, and now you are faced with the question of what to do with the dwarf. And I will actually put the actual dwarf token on the map in just a moment. Barry wants to talk to the dwarf now that the crystal's out of its head. You know, to get a feel for, you know, who the dwarf actually is without crystal influence. The dwarf looks excessively confused, and he says, I can't remember a lot of stuff. Is that normal? Yes. Oh, good. Then I'm not that weird. And just Terry going, well, we did just throw a... Well, we did just tear a crystal out of your head. Yeah, would that be why I have a hole in my head? Yes. yes. Um, any chance I could get, like, some gauze for that? Toad's just gonna reach over and wipe a just blob of toad slime over it and go, oh, shit! <laughs> I hate that that actually kind of makes sense. Shoggy, you are going to be the death of me. I swear to God. <laughs> Anywho. So, uh, let's assume that that did not happen because Toad is my character. Fuck you. I mean, Urchis in there going, I thought we were going to bring the crystal back. Why did we give them the crystal and not the dwarf? No, you have not decided that yet. Yeah, we're in the process of doing this. Yes. So, uh, the Here's... bounty... I'll uh, go ahead. Yeah, Terry's saying, here's the thing. If we don't give them the piece that actually has the knowledge in it, then it's sort of a moot point because they won't be able to stop the dwarves. Well, that was like, well, no one can stop the dwarves. That's what singularity means, dumbass. But also, like, we're not getting paid to help them deal with that. We're getting paid to give them a dwarf. They literally said, bring us a dwarf. 5,000 gold for a living dwarf, 2,000 gold for a dead dwarf. We have a dwarf. Here's a dwarf. Or er, points it in. Living dwarf points the crystal. Dead dwarf. So give them both. I'm actually up for giving them both and getting money out of it. Or just looks at the crystal in his hand. After all, in two weeks, we have to pay a slime. Er, just... <laughs> Ert does not have the crystal in his hand. The crystal was in Zan's pocket. Ert looks at the crystal in Zan's hand. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a bit of a douchebag. So we, we agree then? Whatever. Sounds great. Uh, any Terry thoughts on that? Mm, I feel like this is okay, because right now he can tell how desperate the college was in order to do all this. Ert just considers all the crystal dwarves to be giant fucking douchebags. All right, then. He doesn't know what a douchebag is. He just knows they are one. Exactly. Because there are no women dwarves. No, wait, there are. <laughs> well, yeah, he's got a mom, doesn't he? And she has a magnificent beard that's not pink at all. Duh. Duh. In all the best dwarfy tradition. Okay. So, Terry's okay with all of this. Zan's okay. Ert is begrudgingly okay. All right. All is right in the world. I mean, look, he does. He wants a crystal that is nice and well behaved. He does not want the crystal possessed by an insane dwarf spirit. You're, you're fine with a whole bunch of other spirits, but not dwarf spirits. I mean, let's put it this way. You've seen Canny. Hell! The, the crystal Zan is holding is far worse. The crystal Zan is holding is actively trying to grow over his talons. I mean, actively, yes. Or it's it like, is... you probably shouldn't hold that with your, like, hand wing things. Terry gives Zan uh, just a bag. and Just a nice basic bag. Zan Not a bag of holding. You put that crystal. into a bag of holding, bad things happen. It wasn't a bag of holding. Uh-oh. It was yeah, in a bag of holding full of salt water. Uh-oh. So, uh, Zan... Uh, the next time you open that bag of holding, you find it full of tiny, tiny, tiny little crystal shards. Oh. Like, Urch is going to take that bag from... No, we're doing this no. right now. Urch is going to be like, okay, I'm going to take this, and we're going somewhere else with it. What do you mean, somewhere else? Somewhere not related to me. <laughs> okay. All right, so he wants to get rid of it. Okay. So, uh, in the meantime, 
The dwarf and the crystal are both being sold back to the College of Whispers for a 10,000 gold payout. Zan is okay with us. Sounds good to me. Okay. So, the dwarf is farted off the map. Uh, one last question from him before he goes, though. Hey, uh, I need you to remember my, ma- my name. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember your name. Uh, your name is, uh... Erist Boat Murdered. Okay, fine. Er, got it. Erist! Yeah, that sounds really familiar. That's probably my name. Thank you. Little dwarf's name, Erist. You're, you're welcome, Zan says dejectedly. I really wanted to name him. Uh, <laughs> All dwarves are not named Erist. <laughs> Have you ever made a dwarf fortress? No, uh, Zan, you get to name the crystal. Oh, oh. shit, no, trade, trade. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Too late. Um, dang, I wasn't ready to name the crystal. That's gonna be different. Wait, is the crystal also a dwarf? We're selling it anyway. Uh, it has most of a dwarf soul inside of it. Zan doesn't want to name it. Zan's not gonna name the crystal. Zan wanted to name the dwarf and he's detected about it. He's just gonna move on with his life. Or okay. we'll trade you the dwarf for the crystal. Nah, uh, it's too late. Zan's, Zan's upset. He's never gonna <laughs> Everyone recover is unhappy at this. I mean, except Uris. And Toad is just sitting there. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. So you get yeah, the gold payout. Toad looks at Toad and go, do you want to name a crystal? Uh, Toad thinks for a moment. And then uh, he slaps a sticker on the crystal that says, no, sure. <laughs> oh, jeez. There we go. The crystal's name is Nosha. Or just pops his head back in the tent. You have no idea how appropriate that is. <laughs> and then takes his bag of crystal and fused salt water and just leaves. Oh, boy. Are you disposing of the crystal salt water? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it needs um... to remember whether it's you don't put the bag of holding in the, in the haversack or the other way around. I think it's both. What one of them results in a big explosion. Nerd's gonna go for that one. Okay, hold on. Because you don't want what's in this. One moment. Actually, you know, he walks to the Terry. Terry, put your head in it. No. no. <laughs> Zan, put your head in it. <laughs> nope. Thought so. Okay, so uh here's the thing. Uh it is a handy haversack or a portable hole. Uh, and if you do that, there's an explosion that teleports things to the astral plane. Cool, the astral plane is fucked. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Ert, do you craft a handy haversack for the purposes of uh, nuclear crystal disposal? That is literally it. Okay. I will spend an artificer spell slot on that. Well, not spell slot, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So, in that case, uh, you create a handy haversack, just a prototype one. Slap the crystal bag into it, run for your life, and there is a massive explosion that tears a hole in the fabric of reality, uh, and it opens a play, uh, a portal into the plane of spirits. Okay, now dump one of those adventurer tokens out here. Oh, God. Oh, uh, just a moment. You agree with me, Terry and Zan, right? Terry's not there. I mean, we just opened a dimensional hole. One of those adventurers should fall out of it. <laughs> That's the point I'm making. Mm, they fell out an hour ago, Dave said, so that already happened. Well, this one's dead then. Mm. Oh, God. Don't waste your time on this numbers. All right, all right. So, uh, a hole to the astral the plane uh, pops out of nowhere, and it is notable that the astral plane is the plane of souls. However, things on the astral plane tend to have a rough time. Well, that's good, because we just dumped a giant bag full of parasitic soul crystal there. Oh, boy. And so... Uh, Burton just walks up, that will have no consequences whatsoever. God. All Sam right. doesn't know enough about the astral plane to, to argue against this. Burton doesn't know jack shit about the astral plane. <laughs> that makes two of us. He's pretty right. sure it's full of elves. No, that's, that's the day, Ralph. I mean, Terry is an astral elf, isn't he? Yeah. He is an astral uh, elf. But... All right. Yeah, so... Terry is saying that this is a really... Who'd have said that this is a very bad idea, but he also is not around for the rest of this to happen. 
And so Terry once again has to deal with the consequences without being involved in the planning. Well, yeah, that's what Terry means in Elfish. <laughs> Terry means consequences. All right. And so we have that done. So uh, Ert has disposed of that one particular bag of holding. Um, you have the money. Uh, the College of Whispers seems uh, very scared of events, just in general, and they eagerly pay up the entire amount. Um, but Uncle is actually going to take Terry aside for a small talk afterwards. Of course. So, oh, Terry, uh, Terry's having the talk. Oh, yeah, boy. Uncle, I know where the birds and bees are. I know all about them. Yes, they're on another island. They fled as soon as the Empire landed. They're smarter than us. <laughs> Anywho, so uh, Terry is going to have a small talk with Uncle, and Uncle says, So, Terry, I realize that things didn't go exactly as I had intended, but I did have something that I wanted to discuss with you for the future, if you would be all right with it. I am all right with it. What do you want to talk about? The College of Whispers, well, you've no doubt noticed by this point, but it is a bit unfocused, a bit all over the place, and a bit too eager to grab for bright bursts of power when they could be doing something more important. He just nods like, right? My thought was that given the current circumstances, we could actually change the trajectory of the College a little bit. Now, I'm not going to ask for 100% allegiance or some oath of loyalty or whatever. I just want to know if this would be something that you would be comfortable helping out with from time to time. You mean practically taking over the college? Uncle looks like he's about to say no, but then he says, that would be what it functionally is, yes. You may have noticed that the actions of the college up until now have been largely incompetent. They're not realizing the exact scope of what they're getting involved with anymore, are they? Indeed not. They thought that they had the entire situation on lockdown, and they thought that they knew everything that there was to know. And so they made a lot of dangerous assumptions, got in over their heads, and proved that they were not nearly as capable as they thought they were. They're still struggling to maintain relevance, and they're still trying to pretend that this was all their plan. But the upshot of it all is that they're basically just playing with fire at this point. And I don't know what to do about it, aside from try and put things on the right path. All right. Now, of course, the right path is one that is entirely subjective, and you may one day uh, come to regret helping me with any of this, but I'd like to think that I have my head on straighter than, well, some of these people. Terry nods as he thinks about it, and says, mm, I'll help. Very well, then. I might contact you in the future, and I'll use a particular key phrase in order to indicate that it's something related to all this. But I do want to specify, if you think that I am going too far, I want to know, all right? All right. But I will help all of this, by the way, under one condition. And what would that be? You tell the others your actual name. But Wait, your name's not Uncle? <laughs> <laughs> but that would mean that... Oh, but I like the... Oh. You're testing how much this means to me, uh, to me, aren't you? Terry just grins. Oh, but I like the joke. Oh, very well. They may continue it, but I want them to actually know who they're working with. Very well. And so, uh, he actually visits the camp a little later. Uh, you know, he says on some personal business, and he makes sure to introduce himself by his real name, Montgomery. You would be a Montgomery. <laughs> Uncle's name is Montgomery. You Fairies? would be yes. a Montgomery. You can also call him Monty if you'd like. I hate is Monty. Your first name, I... Is that your first name or your last name? It's <laughs> my first name. Is your last name Bernard? He winces, uh, but he does not answer. You would be a Bernard Montgomery. Or Montgomery Bernard. Yeah, anyway. Bird is just disappointed. <laughs> Those names don't sound Elfie at all. It's just Terry just stares at because he's not an, it's a, he's not an elf, Ert. Bert looks at Terry, who is an elf. <laughs> at his uncle, who isn't. He 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 just doesn't know what to make of this. 
just wanders off grumbling. <laughs> oh boy. Where's Lunk Thunk? So he's like, I don't understand. They both have long pointed ears. So with that, we are going to end off with you guys richer by a whole lot. You almost doubled your military budget in a single session. Good job, us. Good job. Yay. Now, here's the question for you. Uh, did you have your runic pylon turned on or off? We didn't have a runic pylon with us. Yeah, and we no wouldn't have died that would give experience. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Terry does mention, it's just like, we know Addy owes us a favor. We could ask him to recharge our pylons. That's valid. That is something that you could legitimately do. Uh, speaking of which, I am going to put on your subtle hooks, Terry. I'm going to put down Addy in Wizard's Watering Hole. I bet his I bet his uh, role is going to be super goddamn high if I ever want to get him as a hook again. Uh, yes, uh, I put down the hook strength as 20. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, uh, with that, we are going to end off this particular session. Uh, you are one experience point uh, out of four towards your next level up. You did not get any runic energy. You are pretty low on runic energy at 27 out of 70. I thought we recharged oh, yeah, it. Someone oh, teleported wait. my slime. With all the money we made, how much money would it cost for Addy to recharge our pylons? Hmm. I will get back to you on that. And uh, if I remember, I will start out the next session with that. In fact, I might just pin it in the channel so that I definitely don't forget. Anyway. I'll remind you the day before, too. Please do. <laughs> In any case, so we are going to leave off there. I hope you all enjoyed this kind of chaotic wandering. But you know what? Zan got to punch someone, uh, Ert got to ruin something, and Terry got to be sneaky. So that sounds like a success in my book. Sneaky and finally got to show just a little bit of how absolutely terrifying he is to his college. It's true. Anywho, I wish you all a wonderful evening. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.